Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Welcome into the presence of the Lord here at God's White House Tabernacle International Ministries. Apostolic House, the place of established love and care for the nations. Mission advancing and ushering in the kingdom of God around the world with the good news of Jesus Christ. Here's truly Apostle Dr. Kenny's release and love our apostles of the nations. Welcome to our Christian education evangelism and discipleship empowerment as they're making disciples of all nations to preach, teach, reach, eat. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Connecting the dots. People to God, forming a network of God's kingdom builders. I bless you here from the upper room here from our headquarters. 310 Street Southeast, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37311. I bless you every nation, tribe, and town. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto him, Jesus, in Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. I bless you in Jesus' name. Welcome, please share the page with somebody. Let them know we are here to enjoy. Amen. Glory to God, the presence of the Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Holy forever, holy forever. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. We sing the song forever to the Lamb, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He's the conqueror of the tribe of Judah that breaks every chain. His name is Jesus Christ. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We'll sing the song forever. And say amen. So be it. Hallelujah. Holy. Yes. Holy. Holy. Holy forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome into the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Holy, holy, holy. Yes, holy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you. Holy, holy forever. Feel the page, invite somebody on. Hallelujah. Your name. Yes. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above it all. Hallelujah. So all the parties have given unto him, Jesus, in heaven and earth. Therefore, go to all the world, preach the gospel unto all creation, baptizing them in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that he has commanded. He said, Behold, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Hallelujah. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. Hallelujah, above all throne and dominion, all power and position. Your name stands above them all. Jesus Christ, holy, all creation, God. Jesus 
to break and retain our blessing every nation, tribe, and tongue from North America to South America to Africa to Asia to Europe to Australia, Oceania. Hallelujah. Listen to an article. All seven continents and houses. Glory to God, the nations and territories of the world. I bless you. Welcome into the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. He said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who trusts in him. Those who trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion that shall not be hid. Glory to God. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God bless you on our Facebook, YouTube channel. I speak grace to you in the name of Jesus. Welcome into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. There's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I represent and honor your flag of your nation as you raise a banner for the nation. Hallelujah. I bless you. 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 To break every chain. Power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. To break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. Break every chain. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Break every chain. Hallelujah. There's an army rising up. Hallelujah. You can reach out to us. Amen. Join the army of the Lord. The Lord is of God. Hallelujah. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's an army rising up to break every chain. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes. To break every chain. Thank you, Jesus. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Yes, break every chain. My God, we decree and declare. Breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The chains are broken in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I hear the chains they're falling in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare, glory to God, chains broken, hallelujah, lives are mended in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, glory to God, thank you Jesus, the chains are falling right now in the name of Jesus, I hear the chains, they're falling, the chains are falling. Salama city devotion. I hear the chains. They're falling. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. 
Thank God that the chains are falling in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to play this song. We are a chosen generation. Glory to God. I know who God says I am. Hallelujah. What he says I am. Where he says I am. We're walking in power. We're walking in miracles. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit.
Amen. Amen. I know who I am. Glory to God. I hope you have enjoyed yourself this morning, this evening, for many of you around the world. To God be all the glory. Today is the 11th of April of 2024. Glory to God. I want to read the psalm for you. Psalm chapter 11. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just say thank you, Jesus? Hallelujah. He woke us up this morning, clothed us in our right mind. Glory to God. The psalmist with everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise he, the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel the fresh wind of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. It says, not by might or by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to bless the Lord for a moment. Glory to God. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgive all my sins, heal all my diseases, redeems my life from the pit, and crowns with love and kindness and tender mercies. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Glory to God. Can I hear you? I am redeemed. I'm brought with a price. Glory to God. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. That means you are bought back. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The psalmist said, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, I would have been swallowed up. But thanks be to God who has given me the strength again and again to triumph. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Today we're going to have an interactive time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to interact. Amen. As I do the Christian education, evangelism, and discipleship empowerment time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank God for those of you who are logging on around the world. I salute you. Glory to God. I see Amen. Prophetess Ariel. Glory to God. I see Angela Watkins Rivers. Glory to God. Yes. Bless you. I want to highlight that comment. Glory to God. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you. May many souls be added to the kingdom. God bless you. Glory to God. And we see, I see Elias Francis out of Pakistan. Let me highlight you. There you are, Pastor Elias Francis. God bless you. I bless you. I bless you. Thank you for the great work you're doing there in the kingdom in Pakistan. Glory to God. Let me know where you're logging on from. Thank God for each of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I feel the fresh wind of God. I feel the fire of God. Amen. Hallelujah. In this place. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Psalm 11 says, hallelujah. Talk about faith in the Lord's righteousness. It says, in the Lord, I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow on the string that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? That's a great question. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids test the sons of men. The Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence, he, his soul hates. Upon the wicked, upon the wicked, he will rain coals. Fire and brimstone and a burning wind shall be the portion of their cup. Verse 7 says, For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteousness. His countenance beholds the upright. I want you to hear that again. Psalm 11, verse 7. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteousness. 
His countenance beholds the upright. Glory to God. I feel the fresh wind of God. The fresh fire of God. Hallelujah. In the house. Glory to God. I see my son. Glory to God. Pastor Moses. Amen. Uh, logging on out of Kenya. God bless you, son. Amen. Glory to God. Let me highlight you on my screen as well. Glory to God. I bless you. I bless you. Hallelujah. Grace to you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen, I'm going to ask each of you to, uh, to interact with me whenever I give scriptures. I want you to type it in the comments. I want you to type some of the things that I'm saying and teaching so at least I know that we are connecting. Glory to God as we are connecting the God's people to God, forming a network of God's kingdom builders. And it's my desire to know that God's Lighthouse Tabernacle International Ministries Apostolic Hub, the place of established love and care for the nations, is sown in every nation. And my target goal is by August of 2026. And there are over 200 nations and territories. And the way that God has called me to do that is to use our Empowered School of Discipleship Masterclass as a catalyst whereby which I'm able to, uh, to highlight leaders Amen. In every nation that are willing to stand with me and I with you as we make disciples of all nations. And it does take a clear path, glory to God, whereby which, amen, you are able to complete it. Amen. Glory to God. Off the bat, today, I want to give a, I want to post an assignment uh, for you, glory to God, that I want you to follow, glory to God, as we do the GPS, God's power supernaturally to preach, reach, and teach each, amen, it is so important for us to go through the process, amen, properly, and to honor the Lord, glory to God, hallelujah, so I want to make sure that you are properly aligned in the things of God at all times, glory to God, that you are honoring the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, that you're serving him intentionally, glory to God, hallelujah, that you are understanding God's will, so there it is, glory to God, that's what we're doing, based on Matthew 28, 18 through 20, it's the GPS, God's power supernaturally to preach, reach, teach each, and the first person that you ought to teach is yourself, amen, it is so important for you to teach yourself, amen, glory to God, and train yourself in the word of God, hallelujah, I'm going to post another scripture, amen, I'm going to post another scripture, amen, I'm going to pray in a moment, whatever your prayer needs are, I want to hear them, amen, if you have a prayer request, please let me know what those prayer requests is, and glory to God, I want to pray with you, and for you, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, amen. I also want to post a scripture from the book of Hebrews, glory to God, that I want you to uh, lock into as well. I'm going to locate it, it's in Hebrews uh, chapter 5, glory to God, Hebrews chapter 5. I want to speak on that briefly about Jesus' life in the earth. And so this allows you, glory to God, to understand the great commission of Jesus in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. That Jesus said to the people, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you'll never walk in darkness, but we'll have the light of life according to John 8, 12. But Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says, Jesus said, all authority has been given unto him in heaven and earth. Therefore, go into all the world, preach the gospel unto all creation, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that he, Jesus, commanded. He said, behold, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Glory to God. So, amen. Uh, Hebrews chapter 5, from verses 7, Hebrews 5, from verses 7, uh, all the way to verses 14. Amen. Glory to God. Okay, we're going to get into that as well. Glory to God. We're going to get into that scripture because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Amen. That's Romans 10, 17. Glory to God. And Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, 
it's impossible to please God. Those who come to him must believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. So you have to seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So it's important for us to get into uh, a space with the Lord where we recognize, as the scripture says, Psalm 119, verse 105, it says, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. So I'm just giving you some frame of references today that you can always go back and write these scriptures out so you understand the roadmap that we're taking. You understand the pathway that we are going, that it focuses on our intimacy with God leads to our identity. Our identity leads to our influence. Our influence leads to our industry. Amen. That is based on Psalm chapter 1, 1 through 3. Glory to God. Amen. And it says, Psalm 1, 1 through 3, says, blessed is the person, or blessed is the person that doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, or stand in the ways of sinners, or sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law we meditate day and night. So he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. Your leaves will not wither, and whatsoever you put your hands to shall prosper. Amen. So it's important, amen, glory to God, for us to walk through those eyes. Intimacy with God's lead to your identity. Identity leads to your influence. Influence leads to your industry. Amen. Whatever you do will prosper because you are walking in the things of God. So I want to do uh, the last scripture, uh, amen, based upon Hebrews, uh, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend some time to pray uh, with you. Amen. Hebrews chapter 5, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God, thank you Jesus. And I'm going to do Hebrews chapter 5, uh, 7 through 14, Glory to God. And after I pray, I'll make reference to Hebrews chapter 6. So we're able to go into deeper depth. And I'll definitely be posting an assignment for those of you who are looking to really lock in and learn a clear path. Amen. To effective, uh, amen, leadership and life in Christ. I want to make sure that you are registered for Empowered School of Discipleship Masterclass. And you can always go uh, to our website. I've posted the information there that you're able to go, gltim apostolic hub, uh, org, And it's scrolling across the screen there that you're able to be a part, amen, and to, uh, amen, do like what Jesus did with Peter in Luke chapter 5, 1 through 11, amen. Glory to God, Jesus actually got into the boat with Peter. Peter had toiled all night. There's so many of you around the world, you've been working hard. You've been working hard every single day you get up. But if you don't have the system, system is save yourself, stress, time, energy, and money. You have to have a system. Amen. That's the acronym, system. Save yourself, stress, time, energy, money. You have to have a system. And if you don't have a system, then that's going to really cause a major deficit. So Jesus led Peter a little bit from shore. Amen. So the, the Christian education, evangelism, and discipleship empowerment time that I'm doing with you on Mondays and Thursdays is a catalyst to push you a little bit from shore that at least by the time of our uh, culture festival empowerment gathering August 1st, Everybody should be registered from every nation for Empowered School of Discipleship Masterclass. Our next school year will start again August 1st. So I want to make sure that you're going through the semesters properly. It outlines online. Glory to God. Each semester, what it entails, what you're going to be working on, and you're able to have a clear portfolio and fully certified Glory to God as a catalyst. And then Jesus was able to tell Peter, after Peter obeyed Jesus, amen, so I want you to be obedient. Obedient is better than sacrifice, amen. It is so important to be obedient. The Bible said in Isaiah 119, the faithful and the obedient will eat the fruit of the land. Glory to God. You have to be faithful and you have to be obedient, 
Amen. Glory to God. That is preparation meets opportunity. Amen. Glory to God. Preparation meets opportunity equals success. Amen. Glory to God. So let's go through that again. Preparation, uh, amen, meets opportunity equals success. Amen. I want you to be better prepared. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Preparation meets opportunity. Glory to God equals success. I'm, I'm putting it out on the line there. Glory to God, because I want you to see it and understand what we're doing. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Preparation meets opportunity equals success. And I want you to be successful. And that's what Jesus showed Peter how to fish for people. So there it is. Glory to God. I'm going to highlight it for you because I want to make sure that you are following me as I follow Christ. Amen. As 1 Corinthians 11 verses 1 states. Amen. Glory to God. So there it is. Hallelujah. Preparation meets opportunity equals success. Amen. Glory to God. So Hebrews chapter 5, 7 through 14, and it says, who in the days of his flesh, this is referring to Jesus, in the days of Jesus' flesh, when he lived in the earth, uh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear, though he was a son, Yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Called by God as high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have much to say, and hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Glory to God. This is absolutely important for you to understand that scripture. So when you are not versed in the word of God, I'm not talking about quoting a scripture. I want you to be versed in what it means to be a Christian because the word is Jesus Christ, amen, personified. Amen. Your ABC, accept, believe, confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And he says it in John chapter 15. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall ask what it will and it shall be done. Amen. Glory to God. So abide means to live in, to dwell in. Glory to God. So this is so important for you and I to get in position uh, with the Lord. Glory to God. So I want you, please, amen, be sure to go ahead and register uh, yourself, uh, amen. Uh, you get to take the spiritual assessment uh, survey as well. Glory to God. And there is tuition cost. You have different ways in which you can start Amen. To uh, get your amount in. Amen. Glory to God. Five seventy-five per semester. There's four semesters. And for those of you, if you need a scholarship, amen. Glory to God. Uh, to study, uh, there's an opportunity there for you to submit 
the application accordingly, amen, basically it gives you a way that you could pay a smaller amount, amen, and do work study in a greater way directly with me based on what your ministry entails. Glory to God. So please go ahead and visit, amen, uh, the website and get things uh, started, amen. I would, and I would like to encourage you to take the spiritual assessment survey. Just click on the link. This is a survey, amen, glory to God. I had one of our leaders, um, uh, Prophetess Ariel, uh, she took the spiritual gift survey that is on our site, and it was so wonderful that she turned it into me yesterday, a copy, that is, because what I allow each person to do is to create a folder of what is expected. And so she uh, turned it in, a copy to me yesterday. And this survey is like 80 questions. And you get to answer the way the best you know how to answer. And it allows you to, amen, uh, see what are some of the characteristics that you have. Is it highly characteristic of you or definitely sure of you most of the time, frequently characteristic, occasionally or not at all. So it helps you to start to look through the different gifts of the spirit. And when you have a gift of the spirit, you get to unwrap that gift. It's like if you get a gift, if I give you a gift, which is what I'm doing to you right now, I'm giving you the gift. I'm a gift to the body of Christ as mother apostles of the nations. And so when you get that gift, you're going to start to unwrap it and also think about the person who gave you the gift. And so the Bible says in John 3, 16 and 17, for God so loved the world that he gave. He did a gift. He gave his only begotten son and whosoever believes in him should not perish and have everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him may be saved. So it's absolutely important for you to get in the flow of what God is doing, get in the move of what God is doing, amen, make your calling and election sure, and one year is a short-term goal, amen, glory to God. Of course, you get to go through uh, three years, but the first year is very intensive and it gives you a great pattern. So at least when you get to the second year, and the third year with me, you're actually uh, strengthening your stakes in the ground as we continue to launch out into the deep together, just like Jesus chose his 12 disciples who he named apostles, but he trained them for three years. Amen. Uh, just like it is with Daniel and his friends in Daniel chapter one, the Bible says when they were carried away to Babylon, amen, Babylonian captivity, they were there to study for three years. Amen. Glory to God. So I am very, very specific. They studied for three years before they had one day with the king. So the first year is crucial. The first year is like treating you like Esther. The Bible said that when the, when the um, virgins were chosen to replace Vashti, they had to stay one year in the and, 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 and apply certain things to their body. The scripture tells us in Esther chapter 2 that for six months they applied myrrh to their body, like Frank, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But they applied myrrh for six months, and the other six months they applied cosmetics for one night with the king. So this is important when you go through the Apostle of Discipleship Masterclass with me, that is able, I'm able to certify you so when I can invite you to come to Cleveland, Tennessee on campus physically, amen, as we get to celebrate the nations. You get the invite to come, amen, here to the USA. We're able to endorse you uh, because you show your integrity and willingness to press in. Glory to God. So that's really where we are. Amen. Glory to God. I always say best. Um, I qualify the call and we quantify the qualified. Amen. We qualify the call and we quantify the qualified. Amen. That's based on 2 Peter chapter 1. We're making our calling and election sure. The Bible said many are called, but few are chosen. So when you go and take this spiritual assessment survey, uh, amen. This allows you, glory to God, to be able uh, to, to see where you are. And um, like uh, this servant of the Lord 
you know, you're able to see where you are in leadership, where you are in administration, where you in teaching, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, prophecy, discernment, exhortation, shepherding, faith, evangelism, apostleship, uh, service, helps, mercy, uh, the gift of mercy, the gift of giving, gift of hospitality, those are all gifts of the Spirit. And so you have to first have the fruit of the Spirit, which is the character development of Christ, in order to recognize as well, uh, glory to God, the other portions, amen, glory to God. So these are important that you walk through the process properly, amen, glory to God. So that's really where we are for this uh, Empowered School of Discipleship masterclass. Amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, amen. When you go through those 80 questions, 80, just print it out and take the survey. Amen. And after you do that, you're going to be able to, uh, amen, glory to God, you're going to be able to um, focus in on the process as to what exactly where you are. You're going to see where it says the gifts the gifts I have begun to discover in my life. You're discovering who you are, amen. And for this particular leader, uh, she began to recognize um, that apostleship, uh, evangelism, and hospitality, all right? And, and after prayer and worship, I'm beginning to sense that God wants me to use my spiritual gifts to serve Christ's body by discernment and evangelism. So you're going to get to see where you are, amen, in the things of the Lord. Amen. Shall we go to the Lord in prayer? Hallelujah. For the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of my testimony. And I present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you, Lord, which is my reasonable act of worship, not being conformed to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of my mind, that I can prove what is the good and acceptable and the perfect will of thine. Lord, I ask you that you let your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Lord Jesus, I ask that you consecrate me afresh in the name of Jesus. Let, oh God, your will and your purpose be fully birthed in me and through me. Glory to God, and thank you for opening up the airwaves. Glory to God to the east, the west, the north, and the south, that every nation, Every nation, every tribe, every tongue, my God, how they will hear the voice of the Lord in and through me, the voice crying out in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord. Lord, thank you for the fresh wind of your grace. Thank you, Lord, for the fresh wind of your anointing. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. That your grace is sufficient to keep me. Your strength is made perfect in my weakness. So I glory in my weakness because when I'm weak, then I am made strong because, Lord, I completely rely upon the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit who leads and guides me into all truth. So I ask, dear God, that you'll have your way. You are the potter on the clay and an instrument in your hand. And as the question was asked in Psalm 11 today, if the foundation be destroyed, what will the righteous do? Well, Lord, the righteous will rebuild. And so, Lord, thank you for the rebuilding of the altar of God. Thank you, Lord, for your sons and daughters that you brought to me, that as I begin to lay the altar, an altar of repentance, an altar of consecration, glory to God, an altar, Lord God, whereby we can do an introspection of our lives, glory to God, e koribu sutoria, kataba sutoria. Lord, I pray that as I speak uh, English, I pray that you'll translate, like you did at Pentecost, you will translate, glory to God, hallelujah, into every language in the nations of the world, that they will say, how is that we hear the wonders of God being spoken 
in our language. Glory to God. Thank you, Abba Father, for those who are receiving the seed of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God, that you build your church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Lord, thank you for extending your hands to do signs, wonders, and miracles by your holy servant Jesus, while you grant me the boldness, glory to God, to do what only you alone can do, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the fresh wind of your grace. Thank you for household salvation, for those who accept, believe, and confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So they believe in their heart, they confess with their mouth, that Lord Jesus, you were raised from the dead, hallelujah, on the third day, and Lord, hallelujah, glory to God, repentance for forgiveness of sins will be preached in your name to all nations. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord God, for this time of Christian education, evangelism, and discipleship empowerment. Thank you for this time of mentoring sons and daughters around the world that you have chosen. Glory to God from the east, the west, the north, and the south. Thank you, our Father, for opening up the floodgates of heaven. Thank you, dear God, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, I bless your name. I worship you. I honor you. I glorify your awesome name. Hallelujah, Lord, because yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Yours is the victory again and again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, O Lamb of God, I worship you and I adore you. I exalt you, Father, because you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, dear God, for everything that you're putting in place for sons and daughters around the world to, oh God, be gathered, hallelujah, in this time and season to do your divine will. Thank you for the Empowered School of Discipleship Masterclass. Here, Lord, through God's Lighthouse Tabernacle International Ministries, University of Bible College and Theological Seminary. Thank you, dear God, that you've given me the opportunity, Lord God, to allow the academics and the practical principles that governs our lives on a daily basis to be fully merged Oh God, and synchronize. Glory to God. Lord, as I plant and others will water, that you cause the growth. And you say, Lord, the one who plants, the one who waters, how do each of us receive our reward? So I thank you, Father. I thank you for all the ministry plants around the world in the Family Mountain, the Religion Mountain, Education, Business, Government, Arts, Entertainment. Media Mountain, that every knee will bow to the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee bow, the tongue will confess that you are Lord, that God, you so love us and you care for us. It's not your will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance and gain eternal life. Dispatch your angels right now, like you did with Jacob. Let them ascend and descend. Glory to God. Hallelujah. While you grant me boldness to decree and to declare your word with clarity. Thank you, Lord God, for this upper room and this entire ministry uh, property, Lord God. Hallelujah, 310 20th Street, Southeast Cleveland, Tennessee, 37301. Oh God, 2007, King Edwards Avenue, Southeast Cleveland, Tennessee, 37301. On the right, the left, before, behind, above, beneath, and all the way around. Lord, thank you, dear God, for the city. Thank you for the country. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We said from Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Thank you for every nation that's rising up, my God, washing their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord God, for your atoning death upon the cross, wounded for transgression, bruised for iniquity, for the chastisement for peace is upon you and by your stripes. We were healed. Thank you for healing. Is the children's bread. I decree and declare physical, emotional, spiritual, and financial and social, glory to God, all the different levels of healing, 
for your sons and daughters as they're extending their faith right now from whatever nation they're connecting from, whatever ministry, Lord God, I pray right now, be it unto each person according to their faith, and as whoever they are connected to, let the connection reach in greater dimensions and levels, Father God, for your glory, for your praise, and for your honor. In Jesus' wonderful and awesome and mighty name, amen and amen. Glory to God. The Bible said the disciples of Jesus, they came to Jesus and said, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. And just so when you pray, say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trust against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. And we can say the 23rd Psalm together, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Though I anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May you make God's Lighthouse Tabernacle International Ministries your home, a place of established love and care for the nations. Welcome home. Welcome home. Enjoy the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. If you'd like to sow a financial seed into this ministry, as my heart moves you, according to Exodus 25, Jesus told Moses to gather an offering, hallelujah, from the people whose heart to move them to give. And he explained that a tabernacle will be raised for the people of God to worship. So here on campus, amen, there's lots of work to be done. There's lots of things that we're doing. And I uh, glory to God to continue to reach out to the byways and edges. Glory to God. And we want you to sow in fertile soil, in good ground. And the Bible said he gives seed to the sower. Amen. Glory to God. So I want you to make this, amen, your home, your home church. And you can say, this is where I come to get my daily bread uh, so I can go out into all the world. And you can pay your tithes and your offering. Uh, tithes is 10%. But those of you who have your ministries in your different nation, you can start to pay 10% off your entire, whatever you're receiving from your ministry. Amen. You get your tithes and your offering. But I want pastors and leaders and apostles and prophets, start to sow 10% of what you receive from your off tithes and offering and begin to sow it, amen, here in the ministry. That's your tithes and offering, amen. You also have an opportunity for those of you, uh, $12 US dollars per month, you can sow a seed uh, per month. That's $144 for the year. There's so many ways that you're able to be a part of what God is doing and to plug in, amen, where you're able to receive, amen, healthy uh, levels of growth in your life. Glory to God, amen. And if you just want to give a widow's light, maybe you want to give a one-time seed of any amount, maybe you want to do like Barnabas in Acts 4. He sold a piece of property and he came and laid the proceeds at the apostles' feet. So if you have something that you want to sell for value, and able to come to give that as a contribution, amen, as an in-kind as well to the ministry. We certainly want to receive that. For those of you who are willing to partner with me and you want to be, uh, amen, as we're building, I want to establish God's Lighthouse Tabernacle International Ministries as an apostolic hub in every nation. And if you feel like you want to be a part of the team uh, to build with me, and you said, uh, Mother Apostle, we want to establish a spot of ground where you're able to come and, and all the leaders in your nation gather at that hub, amen. I want to be able to talk with you 
Amen. Glory to God. So whenever we come into your nation, we know, okay, if you're doing missions trip to your nation, if we are in anywhere you are, we're able, just like Jesus told the woman who anointed his feet, he said, everywhere the gospel is preached, what this woman has done for me will be mentioned in honor of her. So I want to make sure that all of you around the world, that if you want to use your location, amen, as a place to house this apostolic hub, amen, I want to talk with you and certainly help you to see how that is necessary as you join with me Glory to God, and we are able to go through some deep dive, amen, in establishing and developing, amen, this uh, partnership uh, together, amen. There's so much more to say about this. And as you know, we're doing uh, the kingdom of heaven relationships, amen, and I talk about this entire year focusing on the kingdom of heaven relationships and what that looks like. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. And so the kingdom of heaven uh, relationships, the core, and we're focusing on that and hammering out some things. And January focused on leadership. Uh, February focused on fellowship. March, we focused on membership. And now in April, we are focusing on discipleship. In May, we'll focus on worship. In June, we'll focus on partnership. In July, we focus on sponsorship. And in the month of August, we focus on friendship. In the month of September, we focus on apostleship. And in the month of October, we focus on scholarship. And in the month of November, we focus on companionship. And in the month of December, 2024, we focus on stewardship. Amen. Glory to God. And so I'll be always making sure mentorship in all of these different areas are extended. Uh, amen. As we make disciples of all nations. Amen. As you know, the goal of this ministry, but just in case you don't know, the goal of this ministry is based on Ephesians 4. Uh, 12 through 13, which is prepare God's people for works of service so the body of Christ can be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So I want to make sure that you have that, you understand that. Amen. Glory to God. It is my desire to focus on the need need is nurture, equip, empower, develop disciples, and then feed, faithfully educate entrepreneurial disciples, then heed, help educate, elevate disciples so we can lead, love, educate, activate disciples so we can amend, activate, mobilize, evangelize, nurture disciples as leaders until the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and Savior of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever, Revelation eleven fifteen. As a matter of fact, coming up, for those of you, a couple of things I want to make an announcement on. Um, coming up in the month of June, my birth month, like Elizabeth the baby leaped, I want to invite all of you to come and celebrate the opening of uh, my month of June. And if you feel like you want to be here physically, reach out to me. I want to celebrate with you. I am looking forward to extend our event place, our event place, glory to God, as I'm using this entire facility as a, a birthing place uh, for leaders to birth your ministry, an incubation place where you're able to have your special meetings and so forth. So in the month of June, I want to make sure that I open my birth month focusing on partnerships. So I want to partner with you and highlight, uh, amen, your work, your ministry, uh, what you represent. So, amen, if you want to be a partner uh, with me, there's a way for you to submit your information. And uh, I'm going to list, uh, give you a way in which you can do that. And we're able to have your nation, the name of your ministry, have a portfolio here for you that you're able to be a part with us. So, and then we're gonna also have where uh, our full service catering, uh, amen, opportunity during the month of, uh, we're gonna have special dinners and meals, amen. And I wanna be able to 
made sure that between uh, between June first, Amen. The first um, our our, our um, planting season finishes on June twentieth, and so um, I'm going to get to go in my perspiration watering season, and so I want to be able to invite all of you to join with me. So from June first, which is a Saturday, Amen. We're going to kick off all the way on to my birthday, which is Sunday, June 16th, I want to make sure all of you are ready to lock in with me, okay? So 16 days of celebration until my 44th birthday. Oh my goodness, I'm super excited. So there's going to be ways that you can join the different circles of giving and partnership with me. And I want to make sure that you and I get to celebrate together. Amen. So that is in the month of June, a partnership. Amen. And as we go forward, as I go as a catalyst, and for those of you who you're willing to partner with me and follow those instructions, I'm able to now lock you in that when I'm traveling to countries and preparing missions trip to the different nations, I can know that you are the boots on the ground that are qualified to be able to join and partner with me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we can run with the horses. Amen. So I want you to prepare for that the month of June. Glory to God. We're going to have our kickoff of partnership. Amen. And I'm super excited. Amen. Hallelujah. You can be a part of my celebration, my 44th birthday, June 16th. So the first 16 days, we're going to celebrate together. And I'm super excited that you're willing to partner with me and to say, Apostle Dr. Hinson, Mother Apostle, I am locked in with you. Together we will walk together. We'll walk together. Amen. I'm saying together, together. To get her. <laughs> we will do that. And then above and beyond, for those of you, I'm going to be creating a package that you're able to book your tickets and as well as your stay. And if you would like to be here for Kingdom, uh, for Culture Fest and Empowerment Gathering, uh, amen, which is the first of the school year for God's Lighthouse Tabernacle International Ministry, the first semester is August 1st uh, to October 31st. So if you would like to be considered as one that we can, you're fully registered for the Impressive Discipleship Masterclass, I'm going to be able to create a package for you through a travel company that you're able to now um, submit for an application visa to be able to travel, even if you're traveling from another country, that you can be qualified to come here and to raise your flag and your banner here for August 1st through the 3rd, our Culture Fest and Empowerment Gathering, and you're able to stay uh, for a time here, amen. So I want you to celebrate, amen. Um, God with me, my intention is that all nations, all 200 plus nations and territories will be fully registered for the Empowered School of Discipleship Masterclass certification. And so we're able to walk together. So if you'd like to do that, that's super exciting for you to do that. Also, for those of you who want to be here next year, we're going to have our Kingdom Takeover Apostolic Gathering. Uh, here on campus, March 10th to the 17th, the final frontier until the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and Savior of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. It is going to be, amen, kingdom takeover, apostolic gathering, the final fr frontier, 2025, like Star Trek. Amen. It is, it is the final frontier. We're getting in there, and I'm really excited. Amen. So those of you who would like to be considered for that particular uh, apostolic gathering for those eight days, I want you to also keep that in mind that you can register and to be a part, glory to God, with me on the wall, hallelujah, as you book yourself and get ready to come. So sometimes it may take a little longer. So I'm giving you all these opportunities that you're able to be a part of the great move of God. Amen. So bear those announcements in mind. Glory to God. You'll get to see some, uh, some uh, flyers going out and, and so forth as time goes on. But I want to at least mention that to you as we are going through uh, today. Glory to God. To God be all the glory. Amen. Now, 
Last but not least, this is a lot of um, this is a lot of um, excitement that's going on. I want to at least also give you this um, for the Empowered School of Discipleship Masterclass. Those of you who would love to uh, start to get yourself acclimated, I'm going to post this um, this opportunity, this assignment. Okay, and for those of you, if you're able to do this uh, for me. Uh, it helps me. Please uh, send a email uh, with the assignment, but I'm going to post it for you uh, that you're able to get it done. Okay, here it is. All right. Um, let me see. Let me make sure I got it together. One moment. Amen. I want to make sure all of you get this assignment uh, uh, on there. Amen. Glory to God. And Submit it. Uh, submit the assignment as soon as possible. It's due at least by Monday. Uh, this is a good assignment for you, so you can now say, okay, Mother Apostle is helping me to get organized. You've got to be organized. Amen. Uh, as I mentioned, Luke 5, 1 through 11, Peter had toiled all night and caught nothing. Uh, so it's important for you to know that uh, you have to have your boat. How do you have your boat set up? Okay, your daily schedule. You have to have your daily schedule set up properly so you're able to uh, go forth and do what God is saying. All right, so I want to make sure you have your time management uh, in place. Glory to God. So I'm, I'm give me just a moment. I want to make sure I give you the one that I want you to uh, to follow through and uh, submit. If you could submit this assignment for me. Uh, this is going to help you tremendously to get a head start and to at least get in the flow of the way I do what I do. All right, so there it is. I just posted it on uh, the Facebook. Uh, there it is. All right, there it is. So it shows, amen, it's a lot of writing. I probably could post it a little by little, little, by little. but this is what it, it shows what you um, ought to do to help you to move some things forward, all right? So uh, it's due, and I said it's there, um, the Empire School Discipleship Masterclass, and uh, it gives you an opportunity to create a, your daily schedule outline, track your day based on Matthew 20, 1 through 16. Also, create your daily outline sketch using the four P's, your planning season, which is December 20th to March 20th. Um, and in that in that bracket, you ought to put Kingdom Takeover March 10th to the 17th. See how you do that? That's the planning season. Then your planting season is from March 20th to June 20th. So you got to plant, okay? And so every day on Mondays and Thursdays, you need to put that you're doing Christian education, evangelism, and discipleship uh, with me, uh, in part with me. So it helps you to start to gear yourself. That means if you didn't get to watch the live feed, because I'm still working out my time and schedule, but if you didn't get the live feed, at least uh, you're able to go back and watch the video and you're able to do a, an assessment, evaluation. You're able to take some notes and start to build out your portfolio of understanding of the word of God. Amen. Because the word is Christ manifest. Amen. And so you should have those different scheduling as you begin to work out your timing. And then you have your, you have your, um, your uh, perspiration watering season, which is June 20th to September 20th. That's the summertime. So you know, okay, it's work, 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 open to the sunshine, get things out there. And you should have um, culture, culture fest and empowerment gathering August 1st to the 3rd in that bracket, right? And then you begin to track your, your time. And then we have our production harvest season, which is the autumn, which is September 20th to December 20th. And so you get to do that. Also, I give you the opportunity to create your system like Jesus. Create your system like Jesus. And this allows you to do this. Um, the word system, the acronym for system uh, is save yourself stress, time, energy, and money. I want to post that for you because I want you to start to have a system. 
Uh, it's like systematic theology. You got to know you're um, getting a way of a rhythm, all right? Uh, this is important. So create your system like Jesus. And I gave some scriptural references that you can do. Uh, here it is. I'm going to post it for you so you're able to see what I'm talking about on the screen uh, because I want to make sure that you are seeing and you're hearing, amen? And there's two ways that you can learn and grow uh, with me. Glory to God. I know I'm finding different ways. Uh, I'm working on a system uh, right now on a few other things in my, in my whole repertoire of work. So it's going to take a moment. Uh, just, just a second, let me post this for you. Okay, so, um, wow, this is um, getting messed up. Okay, so let me do this. Okay, so system, there it is. I mean, I already posted it, but I want to repost it again for you. And I gave you some scriptures that you're able to make reference to. All right, so here it is. Get a system. Create your system. There it is. I want you to start to have a system. Okay, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Okay, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So I want you to create a system. There's a word. S is for save. Y is yourself. And the other S is stress. And the T is time. And the E is energy. And the M is money. You must have a system. Even if you're taking your children to school, if you're going, if you're, you know, get your time together. If you're getting dressed in the morning, start to create a system, okay? So it helps you to get clear paths. It's like if you're driving on the road, you don't drive in the bushes. You have to have a clear path. I want to give you a roadmap. So this is absolutely important for you and I to follow through, okay? Follow through. You've got to follow through. Uh, Jesus talked about the importance of being a true disciple, okay? Let's actually go there right now. What is, what is the cost of true discipleship? This is found in Luke chapter, uh, Luke chapter um, 14. Let's go there. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Okay. So we're going to go to Luke. So as you're doing the system, save yourself stress, time, energy, and money. I gave you an assignment there to start to create a system like Jesus. Look at Matthew 9, 35 through 38. Matthew 10. Matthew 13, the seed and the sower, and also uh, Mark 4, 1 through 20, and Luke 8, 1 through 15. If you can do that assignment and begin just to practice how you're responding, how you're understanding the scriptures, how you're seeing patterns that Jesus teaches and trains. I call it the hook, look, book, took, shook. Hook, you're the bait. And, 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 and I'm going to post some of those for you so you can see that. But I want you to get in the habit as you read the word. You're not just only reading just to preach and say what it's about. You're doing. Your, your being becomes your doing. And that speaks of your character. So let's go into Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. Okay. And I'm going to start from um I'm going to start from verses 15. Can we do that? We're going to start from verses 15 of Luke chapter 14 because this is important uh, for us to uh, press in where the word is concerned. So Luke chapter 14 from verses 15, and I believe I'm going to go all the way to the end, which is verses 35. All right, so Luke chapter 14 from verses 15 through 35. I want you to uh, go there, turn your Bibles there, so it helps us to stay focused. Make sure you're journaling. Always get a, get a little book, get a notebook or a, a, a set thing that you write or type and you put Christian education, evangelism, and discipleship empowerment with Apostle Dr. Peace and Mother, Apostle to the Nations, God's White House Tabernacle International Ministries. Put it down. That's, that's where you're going to always go add your notes and put each date that I teach. And you just say, okay, here is what I need to focus on, on on those days. And mark it down. It's Mondays and Thursdays, okay? So there it is already. You already start to organize your day. 
All right. So I want you to always be organized. Okay. This is absolutely important for you to always try. Amen. Sometimes you're going to start to see the good problem you're going to have. Sometimes you're going to have overwhelming, you're going to have overwhelming results once you have a system. You're going to be overwhelmed with so much uh, great blessings. All right. So there it is. I, I want to post it. What scripture we're focusing on. All right. So while I have that up, let me go ahead and highlight that. That's the scripture we're going to be reading. Uh, while we're having that up, I want to at least give you another set of goodies. You ready for the goodies? I'm going to give you the goodies that I want you to focus on. Uh, this is based on the um, your the eight watches of the day. I'm going to give you that because I want you to start to plan um, how you organize your day. All right. Um, so this is, let me give you, let me give that to you just a moment. I want to post that for you and help you to get a jump start on what we do, right? Um, so at least when you come to the Empire School of Discipleship Master, that's in register, you're like, okay, I got a system. I know the path of success that I'm heading on with Dr. Hinson. I know what I'm doing. I get the path, and you're able to teach others. You're able to be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. Genesis 1, 28. That's what I'm trying to focus on with you. If you don't get to meet me in person, uh, amen, at least you have a system to learn to be fruitful. That's why God created you and I. Genesis 1, 26 to 28. He said, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness, and let them have dominion over the earth. And let, let them be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. So you have to know how to be fruitful. If you're fruitful, it's because you have seed. And just as a seed. So the seed is going to multiply. If you plant orange seed, you're going to get like a whole orchard. Okay, so you have to know if God has called you to start a business, if you have started to start a school. Okay, how are you going to be fruitful, multiply, replenish, so do you have dominion? Okay, so this is important. So I want you to have planning and leadership development based on Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. Make sure you write that out. Write out Jeremiah, write out Jeremiah uh, 29, 11 through 14. I have my journal here and some time ago, uh, December 29, 2022, I wrote it out in this book. I have so many journals, okay? And I just journal, but I wrote out Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. See how God is giving you the order in which he hears you. Because he can't hear you in chaos, okay? You can be praying, but the Bible says the firm and effectual prayer of the righteous avails much. So you have to come in firm and effectual prayer. You have to have that level of knowing, all right? So there it is. I have given you the watch, okay? Let me see if I can post it for you. For those, there it is. Okay. So there it is. I've given you how to have daily scheduled time management submitted. So Matthew 21 through 16. The first watch is 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. The second watch is from 9 p.m. to midnight. Okay. The third watch is from midnight to 3 a.m. The fourth watch is from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Okay. The fifth watch is uh, from uh, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. And uh, the sixth watch uh, from uh, 9 a.m. to noon. The seventh watch is from noon to 3 p.m. And the eighth watch is 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. So if you follow those different levels of leadership, that's important. Thank you so much for posting uh, Motori Evans. Thank you so much uh, for posting Jeremiah 29. Awesome. Jeremiah 29, and you're logging in. Hallelujah. From uh, Namia, Kenya. God bless you. Let's highlight you. Amen. There you are. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14, and God bless you. Thank you so much. I salute you and bless you and the nation of Kenya, which is in Africa. Africa has 54 nations, all right? All right. So Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14, as you're, as you're beginning to highlight what you need to do, it says, for I know the plans 
and thoughts I think towards you, declares the Lord. Um, amen. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Hope and a future. Okay? And it says, then, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. There's a certain way to approach God. Amen. He said, I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. All your heart is your thoughts, your will, your emotions. You're doing, your your thinking, and your all of what you represent. You have to seek the Lord. Amen. He says, Amen. When you seek with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations. I will gather you from all the nations. Amen. And places where I have banished you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. So in your, in your notes, I want you to write out Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. Write it out. Because what you write, it sends a message from your hand as about us to write the vision. How about which chapter two? Write the vision, make it plain upon tablets. Amen. For those who see it may run with it. When you're yeah, seeing is believing, isn't it? Yes, come and see. And that's what the disciples did with Jesus. When amen, glory to God. When when Philip told um Nathaniel, hey, we found the Messiah. Yeah, you're like, you say, can any good thing come of Nazareth? People may look at you and then you may look poor and dejected, but when you can write things down and the Holy Spirit finds a way in you to spark the power of God. Amen. So you want to write it down. So please make sure you write Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. Write down all those verses just like I did in my journal. I wrote it out. Keep pen and paper. Get it out. Write it out. Have the people in your church, your ministry, your business, wherever you are, write it out. Have your children write it out. All right. And then you're going to have them to organize their day. What am I doing between um, this, the first watch, the second watch. If you're sleeping, let's say you're going to sleep. You normally sleep between a certain time, right? Sleeping. Okay, but let's say you go to school, okay? Or get the children ready for school. Write it in in which time frame that you do that. And you're going to start to monitor your day. And you're going to start to read scriptures that shows you that God is specific on days, times, and months. How do I know that? Let's, let's do that real quick. When God created the heavens and the earth in, in the book of Genesis, let's go there quickly because I want to make sure that you're understanding the word and we're going to come back to Luke 14 in a moment. But in the book of Genesis, God, when he created the heavens and the earth, he gave a certain way in which we will understand the days, okay? And this is what it says here. Let's go there, okay? Let's see. Um, Amen. And when you're writing down the, the four seasons, put Genesis 8, 22. Uh, the earth remains, there's sea time and harvest, there's winter, uh, there is spring, there's summer, and there's autumn. So that's how I got that way to flow with the earth and flow with the Lord. All right. So um, Genesis chapter 1. Let me double check. That's where I want to focus in on. Okay, let's see. Um, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, so in the in verses um, in verses 14 of Genesis 1, it says, Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. Okay, and let them be for signs. Did you hear that? It's so specific. Okay, let it be. So you want to start, you want to be intelligent in what you're saying. It's like studying science, right? People do astrology and um, 
you know, you're studying, um, like the like the sons, the sons of Issachar, they were set to discern this, the times and seasons, what, what Israel should do. The wise men saw the star in the east, okay, and they came to visit Jesus. So you have to recognize uh, what's happening. The other day, um, April 8th, we had the eclipse, okay, and people traveled from all over to come to see where the sun and the moon is come together. Come on, somebody. All right, so they have to have special glasses to look up, and people are all excited. So you have to, as for us as believers uh, who are Christians, you have to get in alignment with God. You can't be sounding uneducated. You've got to be educated as to what the scripture says. All of education is found in the word of God. It's a biblical worldview. It doesn't matter if you're studying science, if you're studying movie, motion pictures. You're, it's all in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. There is a clear way there. The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God. Thank you, um, Matori Evans, for being a great student and great leader with me. You're posting the scriptures for me. It helps me so I don't have to keep typing it, all right? So, yeah, so Genesis chapter 1, we're going to go all the way down to um, from one uh, from verse 14 through to, uh, through to 18, okay? We're going to make sure we do that because this is important for us to navigate uh, properly. Right, we, we're gonna have to know where we find what we need. Okay, we have to say, Give us this day our daily bread. All right, so make sure you, you title today's date being the uh, the 11th of April 2024. Put it that it's a Thursday, so you know when you time come back. For instance, when I wrote this Jeremiah 29 11 to 14 down, it was. December 29, 2022, and I put on a Thursday. It was a Thursday. So you could go back, because you know, sometimes we forget stuff. So it's good to go back and you could just say, wow. And then you start to see how God is blessing you, and you can track the blessings. You can track the blessings, all right? So we're going to go all the way, Genesis 1, 14 through 19. Uh, we're going to stop there, all right? So we get to know how we are planning our day. Now listen to it. Then he said, Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day. Okay? To divide the day uh, from the night. And let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. Did you get that? Did you get that? This is important. All right, let it be for days and years. You gotta become organized. This is in Genesis, the book of beginnings. Okay, you have to be organized. Just as John chapter one said, in the beginning was the word. John the beloved was actually John the revelator. He was trying to um, align John one with Genesis one. Okay, so this is absolutely important for you to get into that space where you recognize what God is saying. You've got to be organized. It doesn't matter how poor you are or how rich you are, you have to be rich in faith. You have to know what God promises you. He says he was crucified before the foundation of the world. He says he knows the plans and thoughts and think towards you, plans to give you a future. He already knows. He wants you to come to him and say, Lord, show me the plan. And then you have to walk it out by faith, which is total trust in God through Jesus Christ. All right? So he says here, I'm going to try to read it through again. I mean, I'm going to try to start again and read it through. Genesis 1, 14 through 19. Then God said, let there be light in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. Okay, the other, the other planets. Okay? But to give light on the earth. That's why you can read Psalm 24. Psalm 24 says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. That's us. Everything that's in it. 
All right, so when you read all of 2024, try to write out, here are some scriptures I want you to write out. I want you to write out um, Psalm 24. Make it a, a, a decision today. Write out Psalm 24. And all of 2024, make Psalm 24 your mantra. You should know it by heart. By the end of this year, you should be quoting Psalm 24 and know it. Your spirit man is built upon it. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. He is stronger upon the seas. He is established upon the floods. Who shall I send into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall I send in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and pure hearts, or the lift up your souls to vanity, or sworn deceitfully, so that he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. He said, This is the generation of them that seek thee, that seek thy face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up your elastic doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up your elastic doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Do you see how I quoted that? I've memorized that scripture from as a child. I'm still a child of God, but I'm 43 years old. But I think I knew how to study that scripture probably from... Maybe I was eight years old, okay? So I could quote it back in front. I could go in there and I said, it's asking a question, who shall I send into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall I send in this holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure heart. So you have to have both clean hands and pure heart. That means you believe God. You believe God for everything. And the way to believe God is to believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that he came in the flesh, and you have to believe, and you have life in his name. And every time you go to the Father, you say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, my Lord and Savior, by the power of the Holy Spirit who leads and guides me to all truth. That's how you start to pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of my testimony, by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, always go to the Father in the name of Jesus. Amen. And recognize the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Godhead. Amen. This is very, very important. All right. So let's do Genesis 1, 14 through 19. <laughs> I'm trying, y'all. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I love to break down the word and give you line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, like Isaiah 28 says. I like to give you here a little, there a little. So you can always do your hook, look, book, took, shook. And I'm going to post what that looks like in a moment because when you're looking for the hook, you are the bait. You are the bait. You're going to put a hook on the, on the fishing line. So people are attracted to your bait because if you're going to catch large fish, and going to all the world, you have to be a good bit. You have to be knowledgeable of your personal relationship. Like Revelation 12, 11 said, you overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of your testimony. You have to have the test and you get a testimony. You have to have your mess and get a message. God gives you clear speech, all right? So this is very, very important that you're able to have the hope. Then you're going to look, look. You're going to look. You're going to observe patterns. Like if you're thinking about a scripture or a situation in your life, you're going to look for two or three patterns in scripture that speaks on the same subject. Okay? So we're, we're subject, we're objective in our, we're subjective in our objectives to get a final outcome. Write that down. I am subjective in my objectives for a final outcome. Okay? Write that down. I am subjective in my objectives. That means you have an object, you have a target, you have a goal, and it gives you a final outcome, okay? So that's how you plan, okay? It's very, very important. All right? So these are, these are just, I'm just giving you uh, as much uh, opportunity as possible to write these things down so wherever you go in the world, People know. So you hook, then you look. Hook, look. Okay? You're going to look 
in the book. The book is the Bible, uh, which is biblical instruction before leaving earth. You got to have instruction before construction. You got to have instruction. You have to have a blueprint. You can't build something that you have no blueprint for. And that's why Christ said he's building his church. And that's why we are called Christians. Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You have to have that level of knowing. All right? So I want to make sure that you and I are locked in to the things of God properly. All right? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So let us stay focused on what God is saying in this season and in this time. Amen. Glory to God. I forgot I need to share this uh, to a few people. Uh, let me do that quickly. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing of the Lord. Uh, he is moving by his spirit and by his power. And we always want to stay focused on the Lord. Amen. We want to make sure that we honor him in spirit and in truth at all times. All right. So make sure you're sharing the page. Make sure you let somebody know uh, what we are doing. Amen. Because I want to make sure that you are winning. You're winning. The harvest is ripe, the laborers are few. So I beseech you, Lord, the harvest is sent for more laborers. And if you're going to be a true laborer of Christ, you have to know what you're talking about. Be wise as serpent, harvest as dove. All right? And that's why when you do the assignment in Matthew chapter 10, you're going to see the instructions that Christ gave to his disciples who named apostles. If you don't have instruction, you can't construct. And there are many of you trying to build a building and you're wondering, how comes it's not working? Why is it not working? Because you're not building it according to the blueprint, which is Jesus Christ. The Bible said no other foundation can be laid other than which is already laid, which is upon Jesus Christ. First Corinthians chapter 3. Amen. Uh, verse, you to go to verse 10 and 11. You've got to lay the foundation upon Christ. That means you have to go back to Matthew 16 and 17 to see that Jesus asked the disciples, who do people say that I am? That's in Matthew 16. Then he said to the disciples, how about you? Who do you say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus said to Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And as sure as your name is Peter, son of bar he said, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall be not revealed against it. What does that mean? Jesus builds his church which is you and I, who does our ABC, accept, believe, and confess him as Lord and Savior. We completely believe in him. Guess what? He builds his church, which is you and I, upon our testimony that we know him and we are known by him. That's why we are called Christians. So we become the church. Come on, somebody. All right? So it's important for you to now know who are the true Christ followers. Amen. And you don't, have to, you don't have to do guesswork. It's very clear. When you meet somebody, you ask them the question, tell me about your time when you came to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Ask them, what is your testimony? When you meet somebody, you might, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? No. Well, can I tell you about him? And you, tell, you share your testimony. That's your hook. Share your testimony. I was in sin. I was lost. Oh, my goodness. I used to be an orphan. And, and that's what he gave me the gospel. I heard the gospel on the radio. And I prayed to accept Jesus Christ in my heart. you got to go through that, right? Tell your testimony. Don't try to fake it. Don't try to fake it till you make it. No. Tell your personal testimony at all times. At all times. You're going to do Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding in all your ways. All, A-L-L, -L, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he'll make your path straight. Um, glory to God, Vittori, that is um, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, son, as you're writing it down. Okay, so it is, yes, is in all your ways you acknowledge him. Okay, it's very, very important. Not some of your ways. Amen. Some people seek on seek the Lord when you think it's a big deal, but the Lord is like, no, seek it right now. Amen. So this is very, very important. Okay. All right. Let's go back again. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, our prophetess uh, Ariel is coming along. She's doing it. Um, um, uh, a, a, um, uh, daughter, um, can you go ahead and, could you do it also on the YouTube channel for me, please, if you can? Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. You can post some of the scriptures on the YouTube while, um, amen, and, and on both, both YouTube and Facebook. That would help me tremendously and, and help me tour it out. All right. Yes, and you did it. I'm subjected. To my objective for the final outcome. Very good. Let me highlight that. Um, amen. I'm subjective in my objective for final outcome. Great job. Thank you for posting that, Matori. That's very important. All right. You have to have a subject. And guess who should be the subject? Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in you should be the hope of glory. You're subjective. That means you are the, the main event. And you need to look at your objective. You're trying to minister in all the world. Okay? Okay. All right. So then, then you get that. So you, that's the object. Jesus wants everybody to be saved. He wants everybody to receive the gift of eternal life. So when you're talking to somebody, uh, you want to be uh, have that object and then equal the final outcome. I'll give you an example. Yesterday, I had to be running back and forth. On Wednesdays, I normally fast and pray for myself and my husband and my children and my family and my work at large. That means I do an introspection. I look at what I'm doing, how I navigate. So usually, as I've shared with you all, when I fast and pray, I try to um, do until noon. At noon, I fulfill Acts 10, where Peter went up to the roof to pray while he's waiting on food and he was able to caught in a trance where there was opening and, and Jesus said, Peter, arise, kill and eat, okay? So that's still 12. So normally, if I want a little opening in what's happening in my day, I will, I will go through that time. And then um, from 12 till three o'clock, the temple curtain, when Jesus was hanging on the cross and he said, it is finished, the Bible said the temple curtain was ripped from top to bottom at 3 p.m. Okay? So, if I want to see everything with clarity, by 3, by 3 p.m. of my day, it's a wrap. That means God gives me everything I need and I could go, I could lock in there and it, it, it can't be changed. Because God gave me complete revelation, okay? So that's a principle that I follow um, all the time, all right? I follow that principle, and I, wanna, I, I think I've posted that before, okay? How to go through, how to go through your um, set outcome. I shared that with many of you before, how I usually... Um, do my fasting and my uh, prayers. All right, so that will that should help you to now regulate your day properly. Um, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I, 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 let me let me put it on there. I um, I'm gonna post it online so you could see this example that I said I did. There it is, all right? So I practice this. I put it I put it online there. I practice this when I am feeling intensity and hard pressed on every side. I will fast until at least 3 p.m. where the temple curtain was ripped from top to bottom, all right? And while Jesus was on the cross for the sins of the whole world. So by 3 p.m., this divine opening, okay? So yesterday, I can't even begin to tell you how amazing it was that I was able to, um, amen, that I was able to, um, to lock in. It was so powerful. Uh, everything that the enemy was trying to hide and bring confusion, because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And the Bible tells us if you find the enemy, when you find the devil, he's going to have to pay you Seven times what he stole. Come on. Okay. So it was, it was, it's perfection by the time I get to 3 p.m. Just like the Bible says in Acts chapter 3 that Peter and John went at 
the temple to pray at 3 p.m. See that? So you're going to start to see times in the Bible like, wow, there's times and epochs. There are different moments in which God begins to speak. Okay. I get all excited, okay? I'm giving you all these goodies, okay? So you're going to do your hook. Look, book, took, shook. Your hook is you are the bait, then you're going to look. You're going to observe two to three patterns. The Bible says in the midst of two to three witnesses, things are established, okay? So you're going to have, you're going to um, make sure you look for at least two to three patterns in scripture of what? That's your look. Then you're going to look in the book. The book is the Bible, biblical instruction before leaving earth. Then you're going to be a look, book, a look, a hook, look, book, then took. Took is application. How are you going to apply what you uh, have gotten from the Bible to your personal life? And then you do shook. Shook is what happened when I applied it, okay? So uh, these are the principles I'm going to start to go over. Every time I speak with you, I'm going to start to give you these principles so you're able to now practice this um, set way. If you could do this, if you can do this, even if you don't join the Empire School of Discipleship Masterclass, this is going to help you tremendously to uh, have your, your time aligned. So here is the assignment. I'm going to post it for you right now. I'm posting the Hukulu Book to Shoot Principle uh, for you, and I'm giving you a set way that you can do this, all right? And you're going to start to see how the Holy Spirit opens up to you uh, what what you're reading. Amen? And you're like, wow. Wow. Yeah. You don't have to, you don't have to guess, do guesswork. You don't have to talk about Shambhala, Shambhala, Lambhala, Lambhala. No. No. You're going to know the truth and the truth will make you free. Amen? So there is your assignment. Write out daily. See what I just posted? On the face of it, write out daily, okay? I want to make sure those on our YouTube channel, um, you should be able to see our Facebook, but I'm, let me go ahead and get that and post our Facebook page so those on the YouTube, you're able to start to see this, uh, amen, see the link so you can click on it, all right? And this is important for you to get it there. There is the link. So for those of you on the YouTube channel, please click on the Facebook, all right, as well. So you can see the outline, okay, that I'm giving there as well, okay? All right, so let me see here. Um, I'm giving you all these goody goodies. I'm just telling you, I love to teach. Can you tell, Mother Apostle, this is really where I, I love. I enjoy teaching the word of God. I said, I word of I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. Sin. What is sin? Sin is lawlessness. Sin is you doing what you want to do when you want to do it, how you want to do it. All right? And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. So you have to come into a place in your life where you know what is the payment when you're doing sin, when you're doing things in your own way. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. So you must have the opportunity to walk through the process day to day Amen. Making sure you're following in the wisdom of God. Amen. All right. So did you see the hook look, book took shook principle? Make sure you go through that. All right. So you go from the hook, which is your debate, the look the, in the book, which is a biblical instruction before leaving the Bible. And then the took is the application. And then the shook is what happened when you applied it. And then you're going to do the cycle over again. And that creates a system. Save yourself stress, time, energy, money. I'll give you an example. Yesterday, so I fasted and prayed yesterday. On Wednesdays, I normally fast and pray. I knew that my son, my son Micah, he had invited me to a community. Uh, it's principals and teachers tea at the after school program. And so I... It was scheduled for 4 p.m. So that means it's going to be out to 3 p.m. And there's some things I needed to get organized in my life and my family, with my husband, my children. There's a lot of things that are happening in my life because the enemy is always lurking around the light, right? When you have a light, you're going to have sometimes bugs trying to come around the light to see, but the bugs can't get in the light. But you can see and feel 
where the intensity is coming from. God gives you insight. So anyways, I went through some things. Well, I, I was driving back and forth, and I, I so happened that I ran out of gas, okay? My, for whatever reason, my little light that will show me how much gasoline or how much gas I have in my car, it was no longer showing in there. So I didn't see. I bought some gas before, but I didn't realize that it was low down. So it just so happened that I ended up running out of gas. I have my son and I have uh, uh, one of my men mentees and daughter, uh, Prophetess Ariel, who were in the car because she registered for the Empire School of Discipleship Masterclass. So this is a time to do one in one with her as she's even preparing for her first um, um, in-person launch of her ministry, Faith in Action Ministries, that she's going to be doing here at the Hub for God's Life of Tabernacle International Ministry. So I asked her, I said, would you like to come with me? She's like, yay. So anyway, so I went and picked her up, and then I went to go pick up my son um, out to the celebration. So I ended up... Um, Pick up my son, and we're, I'm sharing about the impossible discipleship. I'm sharing principles, and you know, for me, I love to pour in. I pour in a lot, water the seed, and make sure you know it's fully covered, right? And um, and all of a sudden, my car stopped. Oh my goodness! Thank God that where my car stopped, it was close enough that I could pull over to the side of the road, and I stopped at this store it's a um it's, it's owned by a uh, hispanic um family and so they they sell at the supermarket it was a supermarket so my car got stuck there it's around um after eight or so after nine my car is stopped oh my goodness i run out of gas i look the closest gas station is in driving maybe around three or four minutes but to walk, it will take around 24, 25 minutes, okay? Well, I don't have a container to get the gas. So I went inside the store and to ask if somebody could help me, if they have a gas jug and can, you know, to get some help. But when I went in there, it just so happened that they, the person was there, she didn't speak um, fluent English, okay? She speaks Spanish. So she invited the person, she called under the radio walkie-talkie and invited somebody to come in to help. When it so happened that that other worker at the supermarket, um, his name is Jonathan, shout out to Jonathan, okay? It so happened that Jonathan, I looked, I looked, we looked at each other and he said, are you, are you the lady that did substitute teaching? Last week, I started in the public school, the Cleveland City Schools, and I had a substitute opportunity at the high school last week, Friday. And apparently, the class I substitute for was an English class of seniors. That means they're 17 years old and they're ready to graduate coming up this May. Well, guess what? Jonathan... He was in that class that I substitute teach for. He so happened to work at that supermarket. And he, and he recognized me. And I was like, oh. And I said, oh my goodness, I recognize you as well. You look so familiar. Well, he said, well, if you can wait for me to get off from work at 9 p.m., I can take you to go get the gas. Well, I was like, right on, I'll wait. Okay, which is probably like, we had probably 20 minutes before 9 p.m. And now that, I'm like, wow, I, I planted in the public schools last week Friday, and look how God is now maturing, right? So, God bless you, man, there, um, Rand, um, Rand Harva, man, man, Rand Harva. God bless you, you just logged on, God bless you. Amen, I see... Um, Nasrat Ashova, thank you for logging on. Let me all, let me know where y'all are logging on from. If you want to put your name of your ministry, let me know what country you're logging on from. God bless you. Welcome. Keep sharing the page for me. So this gentleman, Jonathan, he actually was able to take me home to get my gasoline jug. 
take me to the um, gas station to get gas and drove me back to my car when my son and uh, Prophetess Ariel uh, was in the car. I told him to stay. Of course, thank God I didn't go by myself because I wouldn't want to leave my car in the dark part. But God knew. God knew I was going to go through that. So he had somebody else with me and it so happened that it's a person that's qualified in the Empowered School of Discipleship Masterclass, okay? And she had turned in her spiritual assessment survey to me yesterday as well. And we were there sharing, okay? So this was so powerful. So And so it, it helped me to press in and then um, Jonathan and I started to talk about faith and he really enjoyed that I came to the classroom in the public schools. He liked that I was engaging with the students. He was like, wow, you know, it was something new. And I mean, can you imagine how God is amazing? So I got my gas, filled up my car. Well, I didn't fill up my car. <laughs> I put some money in there. And God just worked it out. So now we took pictures together. We exchanged numbers. I got to know a little bit more about him. I showed him, I was able to show him where the ministry is. I said, see that picture? That's a picture of me. I showed him where God's light us was. It was, it was like a roar. It was like, oh my goodness. It was amazing. Amazing. Okay. Not only that, my son Micah invited me to a tea for the principals and teachers within the community. And what happened? What had happened was, <laughs> what had happened was, okay, um, it so happened that, um, Lord Jesus, it so happened that, um, that uh, the principal for Micah happened to sit right next to me and we took pictures together. Um, Oh my goodness, and another teacher of the seventh grade, which is seventh grade, which my son is in. And it was amazing. And my other two children, Alana and Isaiah, they were at the, at the Unity Center. Shout out to Miss Mary and uh, Mr. David uh, Kitchard, uh, the Unity Center. Oh my goodness, amazing. And all the staff there. My children go to after school there, usually on Mondays and Wednesdays. And it's so fantastic. They're also youth leaders within the program as well. So it's exciting to have um, the opportunity to be fruitful, multiply, repent, stuff, do you have to meet? One of my sons on the WhatsApp, he sent me a text. He reached out to me he's, and he showed me that his ministry is in Kenya, I believe. And he said his ministry is in dancing. He teaches the young kids to dance. And he sent me a video of them dancing. It was so awesome. It was so awesome. And then yesterday, another person reached out to me. His name uh, is a teacher. His name is um, um, Pratis from Malaysia. Shout out to Pratis from Malaysia. Grace to you in Jesus' name. All right. And he asked me just he asked me today, can you be my spiritual mentor? All right. So I'm just telling you, God is moving by his spirit and his power. And we have to just get in alignment, all right? So make sure you do that outline that I gave you. Write these things out. Print them out. All of those things I gave you, get it down. So when you're doing Christian education, evangelism, and discipleship, empowerment with me on Mondays and Thursdays, you have your stuff done. You have your way in which you, um, you organize your day. And hey, then start doing your assignment. And guess what? You could start emailing them. You could start to multiply your community. You can start to reach out to other nations. I'm telling you, it's amazing. It's called discipleship. Okay? And we talk about who a disciple is already, right? Uh, who is a disciple? We talked about that. I'm going to repost it again. Uh, an example of a disciple. Okay? I want to post that for you so you can remember the process of discipleship. Here it is. I'm going to post it for you right now. All right, so let's do it. Let us do it. Let us make man in our own image and likeness. <laughs> That's what God said. 
All right, so I want to be able to do this for you, helping you to make sure uh, you are locked in properly. All right, so let's see here. Let me see which one I want to do it on. Okay. There it is. Oh my goodness, I'm getting all excited. Can you tell? I'm excited, excited. Okay, so there it is. I'm going to highlight it on the screen. So you can know there's a lot. There it is. There it is. There it is right there. The process of discipleship and formation, the word disciple, okay? The word disciple, what it means, all right? I want to make sure you have it there. This is important. This is important, all right? There it is. I want you to focus in. There it is. All right. The process of discipleship and formation. The word disciple can be used uh, in the English language both as a noun and a verb. As a verb, disciple means to teach, to instruct. You know, verb is an action word. So to teach, to instruct, to set an example for others to follow and to model for as a noun noun is what people places things as a noun disciple denotes a person who number one diligently learns from the master number two obeys what he or she has learned from the master number three actively promotes the teachings of the master to those over whom he or she has influence even at the cost of, of his own life, all right? So this is very, very important for you to understand where we are, all right? This is very, very important. I want you to lock into what I'm sharing. Amen? Lock into what I'm sharing at all times. Amen? Praise Jesus. Amen. So there it is. I want you to get that, get that definition on the screen there. Get that definition on the screen, all right? Get that definition on the screen. I want to make sure you have that down. Okay. All right. Because seeing is believing. And faith comes out hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the Bible says, watch and pray. <laughs> watch and pray. <laughs> Glory to God. So that's important. So there it is. And uh, amen. All right. So there it is. All right. So at least you have a way to see the definition that we are working with um, on the um, disciple. Who is a disciple? And there are other ways you can describe a disciple. Okay. All right, wow. See, we went on, on a whole limb. We went on into the deep, deep cause the deep, and now we're going to go back in. So Genesis chapter 1, 14 through 19. I haven't forgotten. And then we're going to go to Luke 14 um, from verse 15 to the end, 35. All right, so let's go back there. All right, so for those of you who are just joining us, um, amen. Amen. Uh, let me see if I could find a song. So we could digest, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna just come back. Amen. Uh, let's see here. Which song I wanna play? Uh, let's see. Okay. Maybe we can do this one. Let's see. Let's see if we can do this song. It's by Dottie Peoples. All right, he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. How about that? We're gonna try that one. Amen. Many of you, you want, you want, you've been crying out to the Lord, and now He has sent me to you and you to me. How amazing is that? Come on, put those hands together. Sometimes God, yes, he is. 
Mother Apostle to the Nations, the God's White House Tabernacle International Ministries, President from Overseer, visionary of this great ministry that transcends around the world. I'm coming to you live from our headquarters in the Upper Room, 310 20th Street, Southeast Cleveland, Tennessee, 37311, the Lighthouse Center, the home of the Promised Land. This entire campus, amen, has been picked out by God to 
Do like what God told Abraham. Go to a land where I will show you. And Abraham went, according to Genesis 12, not knowing where he was going. And when he got there, okay, he bought a piece of land. And today we have Israel, that part. Amen, God of God. So thank God for the spot of ground. Welcome home. Welcome home. The place of established love and care for the nations. And this Thursday, we are focusing on Christian education, evangelism, and discipleship empowerment, which is a derivative art and a catalyst from our Empower School Discipleship Masterclass. And I've invited you to register so you can start to save your money, your tuition, also submit your application to be selected, to be a part of the training. But for those of you who don't get to get in, amen, maybe because of whatever the reason, okay, Jesus had many disciples, but he trained 12. So, amen, and normally I teach that each person must get their 12, okay, so it is a cyclical blessing of government of the word of Christ. But if you don't get to do that, at least on Mondays and Thursdays, Amen. In the grand scheme of things, hallelujah, as I'm planting, I nurture everybody, equip many, empower to develop a few. You can be a part of our Christian education, evangelism, and discipleship empowerment. That is the plan. Amen. Is to be on, on Mondays and Thursdays. I'm still trying to work out my time and scheduling um, based on a few things. But at least you know. Put on your notifications, subscribe to the YouTube channel. So whenever I come on, you're able to click on it. You may be at work, at least you go back and watch the live feed or you know, do the replays and hey, follow along, send a word, send an assignment, send a, an encouragement, reach out to me, let me know what you're doing. Okay, Apostle, that you need to listen. I've listened to you, Mother Apostle, I've listened to you, and here is what I'm doing in my country. Um, you know, maybe you may tell me that you became the president. I don't know. I mean, who knows? Okay. Praise the Lord. So I bless God for you. For those of you, please, I would ask you if you could sow a financial seed into this ministry as we continue to expand around the world. There is our website, gltamapostolichub.org forward slash give. We also have the Cash App and the PayPal and the Zelle is scrolling across the screen. Please sow a seed of any amount or one time or make it a regular time to sow. For those of you who'd like to be a part of our time of, um, you know, just the circle of seed sowing, you can sow $12 a month in, in circle of what nation you're from. Every month, you say, I'm going to sow $12 in the ministry, U.S. dollars, that is, and that's $144 for the year. So you can be a part of our circle, amen, of of uh, leaders that we're able to partner together. So so a seed, make it um, your point of duty. Because guess what? Hey, this is my full work. Amen. And the Bible says, don't muzzle the ox who tread the corn. <laughs> and the scripture says in Galatians 6, you should share everything you have with your teacher, the one who taught you. You give. Amen. As Paul said, if I give you spiritual things, should you not also share your material things? Amen. So you can give, amen, give your time and talents in serving with me from your nation, amen. As I have a target goal that by August of 2026, God's White House Tabernacle International Ministries um, Apostolic Hub should be fully planted in the. I'll give you an example. I went to Uganda, Uganda, Africa. I've been there a few times, four times. And as I'm fully... Um, planting the apostolic hub for God's White House there. I have enough people now who've built up. And just to, I went through their government aspects of questions of how to make sure that the ministries established there and all the legalities of, you know, doing work there. And so I was given what the NGO, right? The NGO, um, a nonprofit, um, um, I guess, government organization. I think that's what the acronym is for. Um, and, um, yeah, they gave me a certain amount. I think it's like, at the time I checked it out, it was like 400 something dollars that I would need to pay and get, and send all my paperwork there to get everything organized, right? So the legal aspect of establishing, so every nation that I go into, I always have to find what is the legal way of establishing in the government. Just like Jesus trained his disciples, he said, tarry in Jerusalem, because he worked very hard. He, caught, he got the fishermen 
from, you know, they were fishermen and they were out there, but he worked with them and trained them until they were able to be fully established in Jerusalem. And now Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. That part. Okay. So I'm just saying, so you have to now know where there's a fortified city that you're able to be fruitful, multiply, replenish, so you don't have dominion. So I'm looking for team leaders. Um, those of you just saying, you know what, from your ministries and so forth, we're able to do an association, a partnership together. You join in the fellowship, you're like, okay, I'm under the covering of God's Light House Tabernacle International Ministries. The, the mission, the vision, it speaks to you. Your baby's leaping when you listen, and you just say, wow, I'm in, I'm in. Okay, and you're saying, okay, we're going to partner together, and we're going to lock in to establish God's White House Tabernacle International Ministries in your nation. Yeah. Yeah, that part, amen. So I want to make sure that by now and June, the month of June is our partnership month. And I've shared with you those first 16 days until my birthday, June 16. I'm going to be 44 years old. I want to make sure that you start saving your money. So you say, okay, we're going to partner and you're going to find out what, what your government requires for the ministry to be established in your nation. And you're like, okay, we're going to save up the money and we're going to put it together to establish God's lighthouse there as a center that you're able to now say, this is my home. And so whatever is happening in Cleveland, Tennessee, USA, it's what's happening in your nation because, hey, you represent me, I represent you, and we all represent Christ Jesus. And he builds his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. All right, so I hope you're in. Say amen. Aye, aye. <laughs> amen. I've been working on Kenya. I've been working on Liberia. And I've been working on some other countries. Um, uh, you know, you know, I'm originally from Jamaica. There goes my Jamaican flag. So all these different nations I'm working on in England, uh, all these different places to establish the work there. All right. So amen. Praise the Lord. All right. So that's the plan. And I'm sticking with it. Amen. Praise the Lord. I have one of my sons in Uganda. He's, he's, he has worked on a system for me. Um, that um, that I'm able to use and translate all my whatever my teachings that I teach it will translate it into all the languages of other countries, including giving the scriptures in their language. And I was like, wow. So I'm working on quite a few things. It takes money, it takes time. You know, I have my children that I love dearly, and they're still in school and. So God's willing in the summer, I'm trying, I'm trying, but in the summer, I can, my children and I, if we save up some money and we try, I'm trying to work on it, I would love to be in Europe and Africa. Hopefully I could make it to Uganda and Kenya, those in the surrounding areas. Okay, it takes lots of money, okay? So, um, amen. So you have to start sowing seeds from now and, um, you know, so we're able to get it done. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. So sow a financial seed to missions and say, okay, Mother Apostle, I want you to come to my country and I'm willing to get all the money, save for your airfare, your hotel, your, you know, and prepare the, your space for where you want me to come. And I'll stand right there and minister the word of God. Amen. But, you know, if you're saying, okay, let's say you're in one particular country where you have surrounding countries, you say, you know what? Let's have let's let's rent a big arena in your in your nation and, and invite uh, a, a lot of leaders to come together. Hey, that's a great way too. Okay, one chase a thousand, two put ten thousand to flight. Two is better than one. The three four cards are easily broken. Okay, so that's important. All right, so we are going back into a few things. I've given you a beautiful outline um, of what you can do. Um, to understand what we're up to. I'm giving you an outline of how to organize your day, write out certain scriptures like Jeremiah 29 and 14, understand timing and, and, and yeah, you are subjective and your objective for a final outcome, how to really speak intelligently and professionally and effectively and productively about your faith, okay? So you're not just hooping and hollering and saying, repent, repent. But you're okay. When you when people turn to Christ, what's next? What's next? You're gonna be able to 
uh, give them that level of insight. All right. So I've given you the whole book to shook. I've given you Psalm one one through three. Intimacy with God leads to identity. Identity leads to influence. Influence leads to industry. Okay, we've talked about the hook, 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 hook principle, but you can you can put the hook with Genesis 1 28. The hook is be fruitful, the multiply is look, the replenish is book, and the subdue is took, and have dominion is shook. Okay, hook, look, book, took, shook. All right, so that is important. Be fruitful equals the hook, multiply is look. And replenish is book, and subdue is took, and have dominion is shook. Okay. All right. So those are just some of the things. Also, I want to give you five C's. Write these five C's down. Five C's. Write this down. This is important. Five C's. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Five C's. And it's my confidence brings me conviction. That means people can listen to you. So con confidence, to conviction, to commitment, to community, to culture. Okay? So my confidence leads to my conviction, my conviction to my commitment. And my commitment builds a community, and the community speaks to the culture. The culture is the way things are done, which leads us back to system. System. Save yourself stress, time, energy money s is save y is yourself the other s is stress and the t is time and the e is energy and the m is money save yourself stress time energy money okay so get those down all right so we're going to try to wrap this up and put a big bow on it and ship it to you around the world as you're gonna share this page. You're gonna set, put it before your church to watch it, your business. You're gonna like tell everybody, like everybody, okay, here is the episode that you need to watch of this Christian Education Evangelism and Discipleship Empowerment. Get on board, get online, get fair, get square. You're gonna just share it, okay. Okay, yeah, the five C's, very good. Five C's, you got it down pat. The confidence, conviction, uh, I think you missed one. Let me see which one you, which you have. Confidence leads to your um, Lord Jesus. Okay, confidence to conviction. Conviction. Confidence, conviction is number two. Commitment, number three. Community, and then culture. Okay, so the five C's. All right, so confidence, conviction, commitment, community, and culture. Okay? Culture is the way we do things, all right? In Jesus' culture, you know, okay? The Christian culture, okay? All right, so you want to have those five C's, and we talk about Psalm 1, 1 through 3, the four I's. My intimacy with God leads to my identity. My identity leads to my influence, and my influence leads to my industry. The four I's of Psalm 1, 1 through 3. Make sure you have that down. Intimacy with God. Intimacy with God leads to my identity. Identity leads to my influence. Influence leads to my industry. Let's, let's break that down. The first one of the first four eyes. Four eyes. The first one is intimacy. My intimacy with God. Psalm 1, verse 1 and 2 says, Blessed is the person who doesn't walk in the counsel of the God. Stand in the ways of sinners, sitting in the sinners scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law we meditate day and night. Okay, so that's your intimacy. Where you're standing, where you're walking, where you're spending your time, where you're sitting, where you're getting counsel from. So your intimacy with God in praise and worship. And then you look for wise counsel, like myself. You're like, okay, what would Mother Apostle say about this scenario? Okay. All right. So your intimacy with God leads to your identity. Now, how do we find identity? It says in Psalm 1, this is Psalm 1, 1 through 3, we're breaking down the four eyes. It says, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, of living water. So that's the, the intimacy leads to your identity. So you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So Psalm 1, 1 through 3, the four eyes. Psalm 1, 1 through 3. The four eyes. Intimacy with God leads to identity. 
Identity leads to influence. Influence leads to industry. Okay? So make sure you got that down. And I want to show you how it breaks down. Okay? How does Psalm 1, 1 through 3 breaks down? Okay. So it breaks down with verses 1 and uh, 2 leads us into the intimacy. Where you're walking and, you know, and where you're standing, where you're sitting, where you're spending your time. Um, okay, so that's one and two. So you're meditating on the word day and night. Verse three, verse, the A part, it says, he shall be like a tree planted by the river of waters. That's your identity. People know where you have to find you. It speaks of consistency. People can say, okay, when I get you, what do I get? Okay, that's your identity. And write this down. If I am not planted, I cannot grow. If you're not planted, you cannot grow. So you can't be all over the place, run over here, run over there. No, you must have a set place that you stay covered until. For instance, when I came here to Cleveland, Tennessee, God gave me one ministry, North Cleveland Church of God, I was there for eight years until the Lord released me to start God's Lighthouse Tabernacle International Ministries. But when I came, I knew that I came to start God's Lighthouse Tabernacle International Ministries. But the Lord said, stay here until I tell you. Okay? That's right. If I'm not planted, I cannot grow. Thank you, sweet lady. Let's highlight that. If you're not planted, you cannot grow grow. There it is. Okay. And the intimacy leads to identity. Identity leads to influence. There it is. Good job. Okay. So this is important. Okay. So intimacy leads to my identity. You shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters and then your leaves, the influence is your leaves will not wither. My leaves will not wither. What does that mean? The leaves cover the fruits, right? So you're gonna, people are going to know by your character. By your fruits, you shall know them. Okay? It says, your leaves will not wither. That means wherever you go, people will know you. It's like, people know me. You're like, oh, I see you online. Oh, my God. You're that lady. Oh. Okay. They may not know my name. Just like the Apostle Paul, when the Gentiles heard, he who wants you to persecute the church is now preaching the gospel he wants to try to destroy. Okay? And they rejoice. So your, your life will speak for itself. Okay? When you're consistent. Okay. So that's your leaves will not wither. That's your influence. And then your industry is whatever you put your hands to, whatever you put your hands to shall prosper. Whatever you put your hand to shall prosper. Uh, so so um, the, the, the influence is you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that brings forth fruit in, in a season whose leaves also shall not wither. Okay, so all the way, all of that is your influence. But then the other part is, and whatever he does shall prosper. Whatever you put your hands to shall prosper. That's the industry, okay? So those are the four eyes of Psalm chapter 1, 1 through 3. Get that down. All right, so that's important. Let me kind of bring that point out even more for you. Let's go to Joshua chapter 1, okay? Joshua chapter 1. And we're going to see what God told Joshua after Moses died, okay? So we're going to bring out Psalm chapter 1 into present day. Also, when you read Ruth, Ruth said to, to Naomi, Entreat me not to leave you or return from falling out to you where you God go, where you lodge, I lodge, your people be my people, your God, my God. All right, so this is important how you navigate through that process, okay? So, um... In Joshua, let's go there. We're going to go back to Genesis 1 in a moment. Hang tight. I haven't forgotten. Please remind me because I want to still talk about planning. And I think today kind of help us to wrap that up. And definitely Luke chapter 14. We want to finish that up and make sure everybody is intact. All right. So let's go into Joshua. That's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua. After the Pentateuch. Okay, which is the first five books of the Old Testament. You go into the other book, which is Joshua. Okay, so Joshua chapter one. Okay, Joshua chapter one. Let's go into verses. 
versus um, mm, okay let's read from verses 1 to verses 9 just the one just the one okay Joshua 1, it says, after the, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, write the word down, Moses' assistant. Now it came to pass, yeah, that part, now it came to pass, okay, it came to pass. See, when you have those four eyes, it's going to happen. It's going to come to pass. Something is going to happen. And you're like, you are now the one for the job. You're the man for the job. You're the woman for the job. You're like, what? Yeah, because you've been trained. See that preparation meets opportunity equals uh, equals um, uh, success. We talked about that earlier on. Opportunity Preparation meets opportunity equals success. All right. So Moses, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant. After the death of Moses, not before, after. Okay? Many of you are trying to run ahead of God. You're trying to push out your leader and then try to get in. That doesn't work. You can't push God. You have to wait. Okay? Okay, so it says, saying... Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, you and all this people. Do you see the plant about the rivers of waters? You're flowing. You're streaming online. People know you're the trend. You are the go-to, right? People know. People are going to God's White House is a household name. People are going to know. They need to come to the hub. When we going to the hub, let's go to the apostolic hub. God's like, we going over there. Oh my goodness, teaching, teaching, teaching. Oh, we gonna stream online. We gonna share the page. That's what we're doing. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Preparation meets opportunity equals success. You gotta have that. It's important, right? So Joshua was already assisting Moses. So you need to find one of the things I train leaders to do is you find a ministry. And when I talk about ministry, ministry means service. You find an assigned place that God has you to serve that leader. Everywhere I go, I always find a leader that God has assigned me to and said, I want you to serve that person. Right now, the Lord has put uh, Pastor Dr. Mark Williams in my heart at North Cleveland Church of God. And I went, I sat with him, and I said, okay, here's where I am, Okay. So the Lord told me to get go back there. And so little by little, um, you know, it's a whole new process. I'm still learning how to navigate in there. But to build with him, to partner, okay? And we have to work through a few things. And um, little by little, we're going to keep working on how can I assist you? How can I serve um, directly? Because when I everywhere I go, I always find the leader. Who is, the, who is responsible for this? business, this hospital, this company, this law firm, whatever. I always look who is the head honcho, honcho, honcho. Okay? Who is... <laughs> what do you think about the head? Who is the eyes and ears? Who is the mastermind behind this? Okay? And you got to study it. Amen. You got to study, study, study. Amen. You have to see word of wisdom. You learn from them. You learn by what they do. You don't keep asking them questions. You just kind of like study them and then later on you ask for a scheduled time to sit with them and say, I would like to, I've been studying you for such and such a time. Can I ask some questions? A great example of that is Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus, when you read Luke chapter one, she spent three months with Elizabeth and Zachariah. And guess what? Zachariah and Elizabeth followed all the commandments of God and Zachariah was a priest. So when you get opportunity, you're going to go in. A great example of that for me, God's willing in 2026, the Lord has assigned a special opening for me that I know it's going to open for me finally because I've been studying um, from 2017. Bishop T.D. Jakes, the Lord said from 2017, the Lord said, I want you to lock in. Also, 
um, Dr. and John Maxwell. So when it comes to leadership, the Lord has said, okay, I want you to look at these two leaders, okay? Male figures, okay. Um, one black, one white, if you want to put it that way. Okay, and look at their process, okay? And so the Lord will teach you scriptures and just watch them. And I could, I could literally almost kind of tell where they're going at each time because I've synchronized from 2017, okay? So I, I will, every now and then I'll listen and I'll teach some of the things from their, from their books and, and their speech and so forth. Okay. So you always have to find, there are people that have done studies on me. They have come to study me. Okay. They'll see how I operate. What do I do? How I go through it. Yeah. So preparation meets, preparation, um, preparation Meets, not means, meets, M-E-E-T-S, meets, opportunity equals success. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so, um, but means is also good too. But <laughs> Praise God. Okay. So let's go back to Joshua chapter one. So he said, out to the death of Moses, the, um, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun. Moses' assistant saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place, every place, look at this. This is your influence. Every place upon, every place that the sole of your feet will, will, um, yeah, good, very, thank you for correcting that. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I will. I have given you, as I said to Moses. As I said to Moses. So God is going to tell somebody about you. God is going to tell somebody about you. Okay? A great example of that. Um, Prophetess um, Ariel said love. Reverend Prophetess Ariel said love. She got her, uh, her licensure through the church of God as a reverend. Okay. And then she felt that the Lord has called her as a, uh, you know, as a prophet. And so, okay. So I'm able to, like, take her under my wings. And the Lord told me, I want you to take her on and, and, and I want you to take care of her. So, hey, that's what we're doing. Amen. Praise the Lord. And there she is. Amen. Preparation meets opportunity equals success. So I'm preparing her and God's willing, um, June 7th, which is the first Friday of every month, moving from June 7th on, she's going to be having her, her, um, her ministry, Faith in Action Ministries, here at God's Lighthouse Tabernacle International Ministries at the Solid Hub every Friday. Like, I'm super excited. Deep in every every, every uh, first Friday of each month. Well, you know how exciting that is for me? Exciting. Because I've been trying for a long time to have our youth meetings on Fridays here at the hub. I'm like, Lord, who is going to do this? Well, okay, faith in action ministries. Okay. So, yeah, she said she's excited. That's very good. So it's important, okay? And you can see her and I holding up the hub. Do you see her little picture there? That's her and I. We took that picture on Sunday, okay? And all of you know, on Sundays, we start to meet at 2 p.m. here at the hub, okay? We're starting in the upper room. So if you want to come and be in the upper room with us, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, prepare yourself. Let me know. Okay, I want to come. And I'm going to give the opportunity to the prophetess Ariel to start to... Um, sign up those who want to come so we can prepare seatings for you to come. And we're going to start in the upper room. And when the upper room gets filled, hey, we do to the overflow, which is right below here. And then, hey, keep flowing to the back, which is the event place. Okay. And as you're registering people for the Empire School of Discipleship Masterclass, guess what? Faith in Action Ministries will be assigned to both. Okay. So we're able to start to fill up the whole hub that part. Okay, so that's that's my assignment that I get to give to the servant of the Lord. And her faith is in action, and she is just pressing in. I'm so proud of her. <laughs> Glory to God. Last time I gave her, 
the, the, a hug and, 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 and the Lord says she has connected properly. We are connecting the dots, people to God, forming a network of God's kingdom builders. That's what we're doing. Amen. That's what we're doing, y'all. So you have to come in right. Connection. If I have a phone and I don't have any network, I'm not connected. Okay, you've got to connect. You've got to connect. Jesus connected Peter with John. You have to move out of your comfort zone. Amen. Glory to God. So these things are very, very important. All right. How we navigate through the process. Praise the Lord. Somebody let's call in here. Okay. All right. Where are we? Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Moving along. So then, 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 then. Okay. <laughs> Like mother and get it together. Okay. Um, okay, where are we at? We're in Joshua chapter one. Help mother apostle. <laughs> okay. okay, so it says, let me start again. Start again. One more time. Oh my goodness. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over to over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I am giving to them. Giving to them. God is giving you your ministry. Giving to them, the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, all the Hittites, okay, that's important, the seven mountains, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the, toward the going down the sun shall be your territory. No man, no man, no man, shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Write that down. Somebody needs to write out Joshua chapter 1, 1 through 9 today. I'm telling you, all is going to be given to you. He says, all. Thank you, Holy Spirit. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only, verse 7 again, the Lord is encouraging Joshua again. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. You have to follow instructions. I say many times, instruction before construction. Write that down. Instruction before construction. You cannot construct something without a blueprint. So Joshua, his influence was Moses, and now his industry, they're going to be like, wow, okay, it's plain. We're going to do what it says, okay? So it says here, on verse 7, only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go, whatever you put your hands to shall prosper, that you may prosper everywhere you go. Wherever you go, you may prosper. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Then he goes on to say, hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel the anointing of God, where we go shall prosper. Uh, where am I at? Glory to God. Yes. You may prosper wherever you go. Verse 8. This book, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Just like Psalm 1 says, 
It is when you meditate day and night. That part, okay. You shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Do you see that? You will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I want you all write this out. Write out Joshua chapter 1, 1 through 9. Today, please write it out. Get your journal. Write it out. Not text it out. Write it out. I'm telling you because God is building you for success. And write down prep, prep, um, uh, preparation means opportunity equals success. God is giving you takeover moments. You're going to go into areas and territories and regions and God is saying, okay, you have the principles. Just like I share with you all, write this down again. Flexible on plans, fix on principles. I am flexible on plans, fix on principles. Because principles are transferable. Flexible on plans, fix on principles. Okay? Flexible on plans, fix on principles. So from here to there, here is here is the reality, there is future. What I do here gets me there, okay? So flexible on plans, fix on principles, okay? Got to be fixed on principles, okay? Like the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 16, yes, fixed on plans, um, flexible on principles. Put fix on, I'm sorry, fix on um, flexible on plans, fix on principles. That's what he said, yeah. Flexible, flexible. Put flexible. Flexible on plans, fixed on principles. Okay? Flexible on plans, fixed on principles. Okay. All right, so Joshua was told to be strong and very courageous. Courage is in the midst of feeling fear, you are ready to go. I, I was sharing with Prophetess Ariel recently. I told her, when I was launching God's White House, I had my mission statement, my vision statement, everything. I was studying, and I was writing, and so forth. And I tell you, I was just nervous. And I was the day, the day I was supposed to go up to the Mountain View Inn to launch my ministry and to invite a few people I was so nervous. I was fasting and praying a lot, which I don't advise. I, I want to. This is why I could advise many of you. I was fasting and praying a lot, and I invited others. And I got. I ended up getting. And end up. And ended up. I ended up in the hospital. My body gave out, so I had to. But I was in there, and people were changing their minds. They're like, "I won't go. I won't come. I change my mind." Blah blah blah. And the enemy was going to throw me off, right? And, and, and yeah, fix some principles. And so I um, ended up in the hospital, but I got up out of that hospital with all the things on my body, patch, patch on it. And I went to that place and I gave the vision for God's Lighthouse Tabernacle International Ministries. So there's going to come a time in life where you're just like, oh my goodness, why? how am I going to give birth to this baby? But you have to give birth. Just like the end of this month of April, the end of this month of April is the ending of the third um semester trimester we do three months three months three months that's nine months in the womb and three months incubation time so from uh, may 1st to uh to july 31st is going to be the three months for the last semester that's our incubation time case studies and all of that so this is very very important and i i make sure when i'm doing the um and parts of discipleship uh, masterclass, I, I help leaders to know what we're going to cover, okay? Uh, what are we going to cover? Because it helps all of us to, um, the, to, to go through properly, okay? So I, I, I break it down in a way where you know where we are every year, amen, whether you're a first year student, second year, or third year, you know what you study. So 
the third, the third um, semester trimester, we focus in on a lot. Okay, uh, gifts of spirit, gifts of the spirit, leadership development, cross cultural experience in the mountains of influence, family mountain, religion, education, business, government, arts, and media mountain. Okay, we go through those aspects of it. All right, so. This is very, very important how I help leaders to lock in properly. Okay. Um, yeah. So it helps us to go through, know what we're saying, know what we're doing. Oh my goodness. So we're able to move forward. Okay. I just found something. I have so much notes that sometimes I'm telling you, it's like, Lord, you know, how am I going to get all of this stuff down? But yeah, if you go to our website, you'll get to see the different um, trimesters. This is the, uh, the third trimester that we're in, and you get to um, go through having your baby. So by the 30th of April, all the, all the ministries that I'm now working with for the watering time, you know, plants, all of that, yep. You'll be like, wow, your baby looks really good. You're like, really, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, I train leaders around the world. And so they'll come back, people will say to them, who trained you? Wow, we, like my mother, Apostle Dr. Hinkson, she trains me. Because I know, I know those who train with me. They, I can hear them, no matter where they are in the world. I can hear them and they're like, wow, okay. This is working. And when they come back to me, I can say, all right, this is good. Here's an external events. Here's what we're gonna do next, you know, and it's guaranteed success. Success is always guaranteed. All right. All right, so let's go to the next portion here. So courage, you have to have courage, okay? You can't be in your comfort zone. You have to get like Peter, Matthew 14. Get out of the boat, get out of the boat. So please remember to do your assignment that I gave you today. I gave you an assignment that is due on Monday. I'm going to see how many of you do it, okay? Getting your plan in place. Get your plan in place, please, okay? All right, let's go now back to Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 7. I'm sorry, verses um, 14 to 19. Genesis chapter 1, 14 through 19. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. Did you hear that? Days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light to the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to what? To rule the night. And he made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good. So even so the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Okay, we have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then Thursday. Thursday is the fifth day. Okay. So when you read Genesis, if you want to organize your day, go through what's created on each day. Okay? Sunday, Monday, I mean just do that. And when you read when you read Matthew 28, it says on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the Sabbath after the Sabbath. So we know it's on Sunday morning. So you're gonna now go to the tomb, you're gonna go to the church, worship. Amen. I'm not a, I listen, I don't want to talk about the Bible we should worship God every day. Worship in work, worship in school, worship is an ongoing thing, it's true and in truth, because the Lord seeks such to worship it. But when we come together, like we come together on Sundays. And glory to God, all throughout the week, you want to be planted in a ministry that you know, okay, here's the time we're going to gather. And you start to know the schedule. So God is helping me to work out the schedules 
and give you updates as to where I am, who is doing what. And hey, I'm going to call on you once you are registered for the Empower School of Discipleship Masterclass. I can call on you. Okay. Right now in Togo, Africa, I have Pastor Sandra Dana. Okay. I want you all to pray for her. She's still there in Togo, uh, Africa. She went on in March, March 27th. And I noticed one of uh, a beautiful daughter of the Lord, Reverend um, Ray Biney from Ghana, was going to Togo. She, she texted me today. She said, Mother Apostle, I arrived safely in Togo. So we're going to pray because she's going to be ministering there. And so um, Reverend uh, Biney is going to be ministering. And she introduced me to the person, that, the host that she was a minister. Now he became my son. So shout out to Prophet Dominique in Togo. Oh my goodness, it's so exciting. So I connected, I said, Pastor Sanjo, I want you to go and get connected with other people in Togo, okay? Maximize your time there, okay? She has a few more days to go, and so I want to make sure she has her full time, that when she comes back, from Togo, Africa, it's like, okay, now we're able to help, uh, I'm able to help her to, um, keep fine-tuning the ministry. She, she told us publicly and privately, God has called me to Africa. Okay? Africa has 54 nations. So it's great. Okay? It's great. And God told her to start in Togo. Well, T-O-G-O. -T Togo. And while she's there in Togo, she, you know, she had introduced me to another servant of the Lord. Shout out to Pastor Steve, okay? And Pastor Steve, I got to hear his story. He used to go back and forth and do ministry and business from in Togo, but he's originally from Nigeria. And then he, Pastor Steve connected with other people in Togo. I met this other gentleman. He's from Senegal. I'm just saying. So you just never know. He's from Senegal, Africa, and his wife is from Nigeria, Africa. So you're going to meet people from all over, okay? We're cross-pollinating in the kingdom. Just like Joseph, and not Joseph, well, Joseph married an Egyptian woman. That part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moses married an Ethiopian woman. Okay. I mean, dark-skinned people. That part. Okay. All right. So... God is going to allow you to connect for the Great Commission. The body of Christ united, touching and agreeing for global evangelism and discipleship. It is important. That's what we are focusing on at all times. Okay, the body of Christ united, touching and agreeing for global evangelism and discipleship. Amen. Glory to God. I always want to focus on this. I'm going to copy this and post it. When we're doing the three semesters, we focus on what I call the STA. The STA is this. Stable, table, able. Okay? And this allows you and I to... Here it is. Okay? This allows you and I to... Do this. Here is what we're going to do. Here's going to focus. All right. Um, let's see here. Let me post it and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Okay. Let's see here. All right. Let's type it in this little chat here. There it is. Okay. So whatever I teach and train is to focus on stabilize. You, you have, like Jesus was born in the stable. For our purpose, we're going to say stable rather than manger. He was born in the stable. When you're born in the stable, what are you going to do? Then when a baby is born, the baby is going to cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the baby was in the womb for nine months. Okay, nine months in the womb. And you're in this comfortable place. God is calling you, and you're like, oh, God is calling me to ministry. I feel the anointing. Oh, my God, God is calling me. Oh, my God, Jesus, Jesus. You know, okay. Okay. But on the ninth month 
Okay, 40 weeks. It's time to be birthed out, which is April 30th. That's how I run my system, right? And you're going to have to now, I have to help you stabilize. Stable, stable. So Jesus was born in the stable. So we're going to have stable. So what does that mean for you and I? I'm glad you asked. Well, praise the Lord. Okay, we go through stable is, is, is doctrinal foundation. Okay, doctrinal foundation. Okay, so this is based on, let me get my little books out for you, okay? Okay, okay, I'm gonna be silly. You know when Mother Post is silly, that means she's really, really good. Okay, so this is where we start to stabilize you in different parts of ministry. See how we can develop use you to develop certain core aspects. So you go to the stable, and you know when the baby's born, the, you have to hold the baby's head, the baby's head is all in place, and the body and the arm, you know. Okay, so it looks like you're falling apart. Yeah, it looks like you're falling apart. You're just like, oh my goodness. That's kind of like when us as mothers, when we got pregnant, we felt nause nauseous. We felt nauseated. So, yeah, so we felt nauseated and we we're just trying to gather ourselves, take our pre prenatal vitamins. So when you're birthed out, now you're just like, okay, I have to figure out how to feed my baby and go through some things, okay? So like I said, we're going to the third semester right now. So the gifts of the spirit studies, mentorship exposure uh, within the seven mountains of influence, cross-cultural experience, and shadow internship. That's what we focus in in this third semester, okay? So, um, yeah, so when you're going to the stable doctrinal foundation, you do that for one year with me, one full year. Oh my goodness, I'm trying to get my books together. One full year. <laughs> All right, so here it is, my friend. Okay, so stable is biblical, bibl biblically sound in doctrine, and practice based upon 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. Write this out. So all for one full year, you go through stable. Like, you know, the baby gets to like, uh, you put the baby in a crib and a little bassinet, you know, and you get to kind of like Moses. Moses was hit for the first three months, then he was sent on the night. So this is where I protect you in the cradle, make sure you're not, you know, falling out and rolling out and bumping your head and you know, I'm protecting you, okay? Making sure you're not getting wrong teaching, you're not connecting to wrong people. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm like, I am, I'm very protective of you. I'm like, what, 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 you know, okay. So that's where 2 Timothy 2.15 comes in. Study and do, this is where you get to do this. Study and do your best to present yourself. Okay, approved to God, or to God approved, approved, okay? A workman tested by trial who has no reason to be ashamed, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. Now, that's important. I want you to see the progression. When you're stable, okay, that's biblically sound in doctrine and practice. Okay? So you have to know how to lead somebody to Christ. What is a testimony? Okay. How many members do you have in your church, in your ministry, on your, in your job? If your job is an organization, Christian organization. Okay. Let's see. I'll give you an example. There's a, there's a company here in town. Um, it's, uh, it's here in the USA called Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is a Christian-owned company. It sells, you know, chicken and, and burgers and all that wonderful food, fast food. But they don't open on Sundays, okay? They don't open on Sundays. They open it all the day of the week, but on Sundays, everybody goes to church. So you get to see their system. They have a set way. So when I speak to leaders in your organization, you must tell me your system. I should be able to see your law book, your, your Christian code of ethics, how you operate your life. How you operate your money? Are you integral with your time? Are you talking of all the corners of your mouth? 
Okay, you say you're yes over here, but no over here. You know, that's called hypocrisy. Yeah, that part. How do you treat your spouse? How do you treat your house? Come on, write that down. Happy spouse, happy house. <laughs> write that down. Happy spouse, happy house. Okay, so I need to write it down. Okay, that's right. Chicken and Chick fil A. <laughs> Thank you, Prophet Ariel. Okay, she's just making sure Mother Puss is stay in line. Okay. All right. So, and they do like salad and all that wonderful jazz. Okay. But yeah, they're not open on Sundays. At least, and they've had that philosophy for many years now. Okay. And there was a time, yes, happy spouse, happy house, or healthy house. That's good too. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, when we're doing stable, the first year of your Empowered School Discipleship Masterclass with me, and for those of you just going through Christian education, evangelism, and discipleship, let's say you don't want to be that tight niche with me. You're just like, okay, like Jesus' disciples, he had many disciples, but he chose 12, okay? Go and read it, Luke, um, John 6, 12 through 13. Jesus had many disciples, but he chose 12, okay? So you, you know, let's say you just want to do Mondays and Thursdays with me, Christian education, evangelism, and discipleship. Okay, and I give you assignments and you get that done. Okay. That's great. But then, you know, I have the Apostle Discipleship Masterclass, and you know that's tuition-based. That means you get one-on-one -on -one time with me. I lock in with you. I really press in there. I mean, it's a lot. It's great stuff. I mean, it's like... Yes, you gone like gold, you know what I'm saying? Like platinum, you're like, wow. Yeah, that part. Okay, it's really intense. It's really uh, amazing. And, you know, the Bible says your gift will make room for you taking four great kings. And so I get to take you on trips with me into major open doors with me. And yeah, that's what we do. Okay, so stable. You got to be stable, okay? Stable. In 2 Timothy 2.15, the Amplified Version said, Study and do your best to present yourself to God approved, a workman tested by trial who has no reason to be ashamed, accurately, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. Skillfully. Skillfully, that means you're not just you're not you're not the you're not the fake bait person. You're not name it, claim it, grab it, grab it. You know, I've been watching some people online, and I'm watching your ministry, and it's very shaky right now. Things that you're saying does not need to be put out on your page. I'm very concerned, and I try to reach out to different people at different times. I'll go online, I'm like, okay, let's see what's happening. Okay, let's see what's happening. I need to make sure that at all times you are you are knowing what semester and trimester you're in, because if you just if you're just letting things out, it can become so messy that you know nobody knows if you're going or coming. They don't know if they should trust you or not. Your children don't know you anymore because you're just all over the place. One minute you're saying this, and then you're saying that, and there's no consistency. There's no congruency in what you're saying, okay? If you don't have any mission or goals, okay, you have commission, that means you come to the mission. There's a set goal. So there's a way that I help you to find your mission, your vision statement. Write it out. Let the Holy Spirit give you what that is. And within the first three months, that's what I focus on, the need. Nurture, equip, empower, develop disciples is to help you to focus in, okay, I'm going to birth out. Why am I here? What am I doing? Okay? So this is where you study and do your best. Do your best. Not somebody else's best. Your best. Okay? This is where we do the J-O-Y. Jesus, others, you. J-O-Y. Put that down. J-O-Y. Jesus, others, you. That part. Okay? Jesus, others, you. This is important. J-O-Y. 
Jesus others you. You got to have that down. Okay? So the J is for Jesus. Okay? The O is for others and the Y is for you. Okay? So you want to make sure you have a Jesus others you. You're always aware that you don't live or die to yourself. Okay? You don't live or die to yourself. You know, leave or, leave or die. Come on. You got to have your Jesus, others, you principle. Okay. Okay. So that's your stable. And I focus in, in the stable. I do Hebrews chapter six, one and two. Let me find that real quick. Okay. Hebrews chapter six. I did mention I was going to go over earlier on. Hebrews chapter six. Hebrews chapter 6. And Hebrews 6 says, um, I'm going to do Hebrews 6, 1 through 7. Hebrews 6, 1 through 7. Okay? Hebrews 6, 1 through 7. Okay? I want to read that for you what we focus on in your stabilized moment, okay? It says, therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, elementary, like the basics, okay? Elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptism. So here's some doctrines that we focus on. Doctrines of baptism, the laying of hands, of, of resurrection of the dead, number three. Number four, of eternal judgment. Okay. So we focus on these um, foundational principles. Foundational principles of a foundation of repentance. Foundation of repentance uh, from dead works and faith towards God, number two. Then you have the doctrine of baptisms, okay, the laying of hands and of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. So we go through those principles of, of doctrine, all right? And he said, verse three, and this we will do if God permits, okay? So some people may say, oh, we must wear um, long things with our head covered from head to toe, okay? We're going to go through the first year of stability. How do you make sure that you get things organized and become all things to all people like the Apostle Paul said in so doing in the name of some, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Okay, they come all things up and you win some. Go into all the world, preaching the gospel to all creation, baptizing them in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that He just commanded. So be along with you always in the, the age. Jesus is the center. That's it. Don't deviate from Jesus. He's the center of it all. Okay, and you have to lock in there. All right, but it goes on verses four through seven of Hebrews chapter six. It says here, for it is impossible, but it's impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God, which is Jesus. Jesus is the word, made flesh, John 1, okay. And have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, the powers. That means there's no more sickness, no more pain, no more diseases. I mean, it's going to be amazing in heaven. And you want everyone to get to heaven. You're willing to endure these light and momentary affliction because the trial of your faith works patience, patience, experience, experience give you hope, hope doesn't make them shame because the love of God is shed abroad in your heart. Okay? This is very, very important, okay, for you to lock in in this process, okay, all right? So you and I have to now walk in certain capacities of recognizing that to each every joint supplies, as each person does their work. Okay, so it says here, 
Verse 4 again, Hebrews 6. For it is impossible, impossible, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift, heavenly, the heavenly Jerusalem coming down from heaven from God, that part. Just as the light of the city. Come on, somebody. So we pray for Jerusalem in the now, but I'm telling you, with all the, the warfare that's going on, it's a sign that God has established his will in heaven, and the heavenly Jerusalem is going to come. All things pass away, all things become new. And we have to stay focused, amen, on what God is doing. So it says, uh, um, and have taste of the heavenly gift, and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come if they fall away, if you fall away, to renew them, it's impossible to renew them again to repentance since they crucify again for themselves the son of God and put him to an open shame. For the earth, verse 7, it's important, verse 7 and 8, for the earth which drinks in the, the, that drinks in the rain, like it's raining today, back and forth, it's been raining. But the earth which drinks in the rain that often, often, not every now and then, often falls, often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated. So if you come to our Christian education, evangelism, and discipleship empowerment every Monday and Thursday, so long as God gives me breath, and if I don't get to do it, I will say to you, here's the assignment. I will uh, put it, put out something online, try to at least make that or put others to do that. But it's something I'll develop and you get to come and do the assignment around the world. It's very, very important. So you want to make sure you're consistent. He said if it's often falling on it, it's going to be herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated. There are many of you that are praying for God to give you money, but you don't have an account set up. You don't follow the laws of the bank. You don't know accounting. I mean, it's just not going to happen. If you don't have the pot or the, the capacity for what you're asking God for, it's not going to come. You can't receive what you don't conquer and confront. Okay. That's why I said uh, preparation meets opportunity equals success. That's important. So what if it bears thorns and thistles, thorns and briars, and is rejected and near to be cursed, whose end is to be burned? What does that mean? The Bible says the seed and the sower in Matthew 13, Mark 4, Luke 8. The seed and the sower. The seed that fell among thorns are those who hear the word and after a time, the cares and the words of this world choke the word, choke the word, and it could not produce. Okay? So I don't want you to get into a place where you're reading scripture, but you're not applying it. You're not doing your hook, 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 shook on a daily basis. What's my hook? What's the plan for today? That's you getting on the bait. Go fishing. Go out there. Toil all night. Okay. What did you catch? What did you catch? It's important. All right. I think we're going to wrap it up at this. Luke chapter 14. We've been trying to get there for a while. And this is the moment. Roll call. All right. We are here wrapping it up on discipleship. And we are pressing in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is how we've done all to stand, you stand. Are we ready? Let me see what um, Pastor Danny McClurkin may be saying in his song. He's saying stand. Stand, let's see it, here it is. Hallelujah. Come on. We're gonna get ready to do Luke 14, 15 to 25. What? When you've done all you can, seems like you can't miss. Seems like it's never enough. What do you say when your friends turn away? You're all alone. Tell 
International Ministries Apostolic Hub, the place of established love and care for the nations. With yours truly, the president, founder, overseer, and visionary 
of this great minister transcends around the world. Pastor Dr. Beans from Houston, Mother, our pastor to the nations, coming to you live from our headquarters, the upper room, here in Cleveland, Tennessee, USA, 310, 20th Street South, East Cleveland, Tennessee, 37311. And we're doing our Christian education, evangelism, and discipleship empowerment, which is setting a tone for each of you to join the Empowered School of Discipleship Masterclass. You can get to log on to our website, gltmapostolichub.org, and click on Glinton University, which is God's Langos Tabernacle International Ministries University, and you get to register and make sure all your information is starting to be submitted. So when we're starting our first semester, Again, amen, the school year starts August 1st, and that's going to be even our time for a culture fest and empowerment gathering. But while we're going through that, amen, praise the Lord, I want to encourage all of you to join this ministry, make this your home. Whether you have a ministry already, make God's Lighthouse like Tabernacle International Ministries your home covering, and we're able to partner together to go through all the kingdom of heaven relationships are core and we focus in on leadership fellowship uh, on membership on discipleship on worship uh, this is based on the months of the year so january is leadership february fellowship march membership and then april discipleship and may is worship june is partnership uh and july is um, focus on sponsorship and August is friendship. And August 1st to the 30th of our culture for and empowerment gathering, gathering all the nations, and that's the starting of our school year. So want to make sure everybody's registered from all 200 plus nations and territories. We want to have uh, leaders and students being fully registered for Empire School Discipleship Masterclass. That you get to get an invite to be here on campus with us or to be represented. So when leaders come to do our culture fest, we have your portfolio down because you're fully registered. You have done all the preparation for the opportunity that equals your success. So we focus on friendship. And then in September, we focus in on apostleship. And then in um, October, we focus in on, uh, on scholarship. And uh, so and usually in the month of October, we finish up the first semester of the Empowered School Discipleship Masterclass. We have, we have four semesters. So we have um, August 1st to October 31st. That's when we focus on the need to nurture, equip, and empower, and develop disciples. And then we go to the feed, which is the second semester trimester. That's from November 1st to January 31st. We focus on the feed, which is Faithfully Educate Entrepreneurial Disciples. Then we go to heed which is the third semester, which is from February 1st to April 30th. And thus we focus on HEAT, which is help educate, elevate disciples. And then we go to LEAD, uh, which is the fifth semester, which is from May 1st to July 31st. We focus on LEAD, which is love, educate, activate disciples. So these are very, very important um, aspects of life and leadership here at God's Lighthouse Tabernacle International Ministries University, Bible College and Theological Seminary, and you do the Empire School of Discipleship Masterclass as a certification gateway to help you to launch up into the deep in various studies, um, locally, nationally, internationally, as you continue to walk through the process. So you go through scholarship in, uh, in the month of October, and then you go through companionship in uh, the month of November and in December, we go on stewardship, all right? And that's when we have our stewardship even campaign, what we do, the resources, and God's willing in December uh, that before our production harvest season finishes, we're going to be having a grand celebration of appreciation time, and that is actually scheduled for that um, weekend. Um, it's going to be in December of 2024, and it's going to be focused on, uh, let me just make sure I double check on the date, that's going to be uh, our time 
um, that weekend, like the, the um, 14, 15, 16, 17. Um, so we're trying to celebrate that entire time. Just keep going through the week. We're going to be focusing on that week of finishing, celebrating, and appreciating different leaders locally, nationally, internationally. So stay tuned as we are building out the calendar year and uh, making sure everybody is well taken care of. All right. So these are important announcements. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go into the last segment to wrap this up. Remember that on Mondays and Thursdays, we have our Christian education evangelism and discipleship time. And um, on Sundays, if you want to be here on Sundays with us, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, if you want to be here physically in the upper room or on campus with us, 2 p.m. is the time. And we want you to join our services and help to build. Because guess what? I, I get to teach. And you know what? We need worshipers, music, people. We need choirs. We need, yeah, all of it. Amen. So we're building together and networking together, okay? Um, also, if you want to join my WhatsApp group or prayer net, where we're praying for communities impacting nations for the kingdom of God, I want you to join that as a WhatsApp prayer net group. So reach out and let me know how we can connect together. All right, uh, please make sure if you want to reach out to us, let me see if I could highlight on the screen. There it is. All right. So there is the uh, email, gltimapostolichub at gmail.com, our um, website, gltimapostolichub.org, where headquarters is located, 310 20th Street, Southeast Cleveland, Tennessee, 3731. And if you want to reach out to me, send me a text, 423-740-2992. I actually receive it when you send me one. And there it is. There it is. There it is. Okay. So that's my personal information if you want to reach directly to me. All right. Okay. There it is, y'all. There it is. Celebrating my amazing children. I love them dearly. Here they are. Allah is in Micah. Like and always celebrating my husband as well, Mr. Frank Chihinson. And us walking through the process. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. There it is. Amen. Hallelujah. So I bless you all in the name of Jesus Christ. All right. Luke 14. Yay! We did it. We did it. We did it. Did it. Did it. <laughs> like, okay, Apostle, it's a little bit too much. Okay. All right. So let's go to, um, let's go to the Word of God. The word. <laughs> Luke 14, 15 through 35. Let me read it. And it says, Now, when when one of those who sat at the table with Jesus heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Do you hear that? Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. As our mission for this ministry is advancing and ushering in the kingdom of God around the world, the ministers of Jesus Christ. All right. Verse 16, continuing. This is Luke chapter 14. It says, Then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all, with one accord, began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must go and see it. I ask you, have me excuse. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excuse. Still another said, I have married a wife and therefore cannot come. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house became angry. This is Jesus speaking, giving his whole discourse here. And the, so the master reported these things to his so the, so the servant came and reported these things to his master. 
Then the master of the house, be, being angry, said to, to his servant, go out quickly. This is what I'm doing right now. Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, the streets and the lanes. Like we can't have organized religion, okay? The Lord says pure religion and undefiled before God is to visit the orphans and widows and keep yourself unspotted from all the world. Because there's so many of you, you're so bottom neck tight. The neck is so, your head is so up here and oh, nobody can get in your bottle. You know, it's like the water bottle. Like look at this water bottle. It has 16.9 um, ounces, okay. So you have a little head, that's a little tiny little head and this bigger bottle and nothing can get through here quickly. Okay, so the Lord is trying to make sure you move out properly. And I'm gonna, when I'm finished, I'm, I'm gonna go to the stable table able. I haven't forgotten, I just remembered that I started to do stable table able, and I wanted to, I want to finish that up in in, in flow with um, Luke 14, um, uh, 15 through to 35. All right, so Jesus said, verse 21, he said, so that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, be, being angry, said to his servant, go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor. Bring in the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. This is where miracles start to happen, that part. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded. And still there is room. There's still more room. Oh my goodness. Then the master said to the servant, go out into the highways and hedges. Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. Compel them to come in. That my house may be filled. Yes, there's almost 8 billion people in the world. I want to fill the house of God. We want to fill the house of God. Amen. This is important. This is important. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God. Come on, somebody. Somebody bless God in this house. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for his grace and his mercy. The Bible says, by grace are we saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. Thank God for the gift of God. Amen. Hallelujah. The callings and the gift of God is without repentance. We want to make sure that we maximize and use every opportunity that we do have. So it says here, then the master said to the servant, go out into the highways and edges and compel them. Compel them. What do we have to do? If you have to have a fish fry dinner, say, hey, come over here and eat. Let's have something for free. Come and hang out. Okay, if you want to have a movie night, let's watch this movie together. Okay. You got to do it. Got to do it. If you want to invite the young children, when they get the parents, have a, have a parents night out where you babysit. Yeah, you let the parents go out and then you have their children. Whatever you got to do, compel them. Compel them. I feel the anointing of God. Compel them to come. To come in and that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of those men or none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. Verses 25 to 35. I'm reading Luke 14. Let me make sure I put that on the screen because I want to make sure you're following along with me because this is so important for you and I to make sure that we are properly aligned. Okay. Yes, uh, properly. Okay, you was on launch. Okay. So you could go ahead and do Luke chapter 14 uh, from 15 to 35. That's what I'm reading right now. Okay. So if you could put that for me, please, that'd be fantastic. Amen. Luke chapter 14, 15 through 35. Okay. All right. So 
we want to make sure we are locked into what God is saying in this season and uh, we are abiding in the things of God. Amen. We are locked into what thus says the Lord. Amen. At all times. Glory to God. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Luke 14. You know, when I went to Ghana, Africa, I went to Ghana, Africa, and in 2022, I did five African countries in 23 days. I did Liberia, Ghana, Ethiopia, Uganda, Kenya, and... Um, then I came back to the USA. Then I went to Jamaica. It was a whirlwind, but it was great. But when I was when I went into Ghana, I went to what's called um, God at Work. It's called the Lighthouse, and it's amazing. They have, they have it. They have there, and then I would love to go back to Ghana and do a missions trip there, um, and and where the people would stay. But they had a, an area where. You know, they talk about the, the um, Luke 14, compelling them. So they talk about whatever the people need so they would not have any excuses. No more excuses. And you have to make sure you're not making excuses at all, right? You're standing flat-footed for the Lord. There's too many people. When you ask them, hey, can we start ministry together? Let's pray about it. What are we praying about? There's nothing to pray about. Yeah, I'd like to say, yes, let's do it. And let's, let's be, let our yes be yes and our no be no. The Bible says be instant in season and out of season. Amen. Be instant in season and out of season. So, so try not to be making excuses. Amen. But get into that space and flow with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. So, amen. So here is the, here is the process. It says, um, now, verses 25 to 35, now great multitudes went with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, if anyone, if anyone, here's the criteria of true discipleship, if anyone comes to me and does not hate, we're not talking like I can't stand you, no, it's just that you, you just despise it, and you're not going to make any excuses, and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost? This is important. I teach this extensively and uh, when I do the Impressive Discipleship Masterclass, to sit down and count the cost. It's called planning. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Okay? And that's why many of you, you're building um, churches and buildings, but you don't have, you're not looking at um, practice and theory. Uh, practical and with the theory of what you're saying and the actuality of it. You're building a big, big building, but you're not really understanding how to compel people to come. How do we come all things to all people and you win some? Okay? And then it becomes like an ingrown toenail. It becomes, you get frustrated, people throw away the towel. And that's why the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, that when you build, he said, I plant you water, God causes the growth. He says, each one should be careful how you build. Some with hay and straw and costly stones and gold. But every man's work will be tested. It will be tried to see of what sort it is. And some works you may get burnt up because you didn't have the right motive. The Bible said in James 4, whence come wars and fighting among you? Come to them because of your lust. You war, you kill, and you don't have because what you're trying to get you're trying to consume it on your lust. You're trying to brag about it by yourself, and you don't give glory to God, and that's a problem. That's a big problem. All glory must be given to the Lord. In all our ways, we should acknowledge God. Amen? We have to recognize that he does give us the ability to get wealth. Amen? Glory to God. He gives us the ability to get wealth, and we have to be able to know how to Make use of every opportunity. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So this is important. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. So we go, he goes on to say, you have to count the cost. For which of you, for which of you, um, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost? Whether he has enough uh, money to finish it or enough to finish it. You have to say, what are the resources? You have human resources and also you have um, financial resources, human resources. People are human resources as well, okay? So one of the things I've been doing personally, I know I have not had, I've been taking my time with the Lord to find dedicated people. And so part of what I've worked on is to see about this entire property, make sure it's paid off, make sure it's locked in so nobody can come and take it. So I can sit here and teach. Yeah, and I pour seeds around the world, okay? And then those who are coming in, I can show them my way of building, be the change you want to see, how you become the seed and now, you're able to be fruitful, multiply, repentance, and subdue and have dominion because you're partnering with Jesus. So we're partnering together. We're completing each other, not competing. There's too many people trying to compete. You're trying to see if you could come and steal some people's sheep. You're trying to go over here. No, that's all we're doing. We're not doing that. There's no reason for competition. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. So how can we coordinate, collaborate together? I plant you water. Okay, um, you can, uh, like Peter, Peter was called as an apostle to the Jews, and Paul was called as an apostle to the Gentiles. Okay, that doesn't mean that he doesn't get to talk to Jews, Paul gets to talk to Jews, but he know where he was called. So you have to know whether you're called to a region, a territory, what, where in the region are you called to? You know, you just have to get into that space. Amen. You have to get in that space properly. Hallelujah. So these are moments that we get to talk about and uh, really lock in to what God is saying. All right? So I'm giving you some uh, insights. Amen? All right. So, uh, yeah. So these are the, these are the, 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 the nit drinks. You have to sit down and count the cost. Who are the people ready to partner with you? If I come into your country, are you going to try to, like, turn me into what you think you're going to try to trick me you know when you come here to tennessee i'm going to show you the ropes i'm like okay here's what we do here's how we do it okay when you go to rome do what the romans do you like know the laws know the principles you know so you're remembered properly okay when paul was writing the book of philippians he remembered anissa for us he highlighted certain people. In Romans 16, Paul highlighted certain people that were part of his team and partnering with him. He, he named them out. So you have to have people, clearly, Jesus named his disciples. He said there were 12 that he chose. So this is important. You can't fake it till you make it. You have to be clear about what you're about and always, always. What are the things you get to know about me? Whether you're a family friend or otherwise, confident, co confidant, confident, um, uh, constituents or comrade. I'm, I'm the same person. My children, my husband, my father, my brother, my sister, they can't buy me. I'm not going to treat you different because you're a family. Especially if you're a family, you should know better. Okay? Because sometimes we have family and friends family and friends that want to cut corner. I'm like, no, that's not how it works. You don't get to cut corner. Other people pay their money to have my time. And when you go on a job, you know, I don't get to come on your job and interrupt you. So why would you come on my job to interrupt me? Okay. And I've had to walk a lot of people through that process where they come in and because they see me and I laugh and talk with them, they just think that they could just do whatever they want to do, and I should just sit around and accept them. I'm like, no, I would not be engaged in civilian affairs, okay? My focus is God's Lighthouse Tabernacle International Ministries and all that I stand and represent. 
Amen. I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm fully, I'm fully built my wisdom years. I'm in my fullness and wisdom years together. Okay. So these are very, very important to how you do what you do and you're consistent. So it says here in Luke 14, continuing, um, Jesus gave an ultimatum. So continuing in verse 28, he said, For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king does not first, does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all, A-L-L, does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Talk about discipleship. Just so you have to forsake all. Give up spouse. You have to give up all. And you just have to be willing. You can't make excuses. Lord, no, you know, give up all. Because when you when you lose all to the Lord, then he gives it back to you properly. Okay? So verse 34 and 35 says, salt is good. But if the salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dung hill. But men throw it out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Amen. We honor the word of God by saying glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now and forever will be, word without end. Amen. I believe this is self-explanatory, um, what I've actually outlined to you. Uh, amen. From Luke 14. So if you're going to be a true disciple of Christ, in your following, you have to be ready to surrender all to Jesus. You have to be ready to surrender all to Christ. So like I mentioned earlier on, we are focusing on the three, uh, the three uh, semesters of the Empowered School of Discipleship Masterclass. The first year, or also for those of you doing the Christian Education, Evangelism, and Discipleship Empowerment, uh, you just want to keep stay connected. We focus on stable, which is biblically sound in doctrine and practice based upon 2 Timothy 2.15, the amplified versions of study, and do your best to to present yourself to God approved, a workman tested by trial, who has no reason to be ashamed, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. Then you go to table. Table is preparation for ministry. Acts 6, 2 through 4. He said, then the 12 summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, it is not desirable. Uh, so this is the table. That's the second year with me in training. You go through table, preparation for ministry. And look at Acts 6, 2 through 4. Acts 6 says when the disciples were multiplying, there were certain issues that people were getting left out of the daily distribution of food. Okay? So we're different, seeing different ministries of service, the gifts of service, and so forth. So it says, Acts 6, 2 through 4, that the 12 summoned, the 12 apostles, that is, um, this is after the resurrection of Christ, when Matthias was added to the 11 apostles after Judas took his life. Okay? So it says, then the 12 summoned the most of the disciples and said, it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men, seven men. So there is now being added to the leadership, okay? So among you seven men of good reputation. 
Okay? When you think of the word reputation, think of the repeat. Repeat is to go back. So that means you're consistent of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Okay? So here are the criteria. When you're, when you're building up the members in your church, you have to have them really, they are, have good reputation. The Apostle Paul teaches Timothy about that. He says, here's the widow's list. Go and read First and Second Timothy. Gives you clear outlines, okay? Who and what, how Paul ran his ministry. There's a certain way that I ran, I run God's Lighthouse Tabernacle International Ministries. We do brothers and sisters in Christ. Then, of course, if you have to come in, membership, then you go through that time of really locking in, and then we can go through you being trained on proper discipleship. Okay, how are you going to navigate through the process? Okay, we do our, we do ministers, we do elders, we do also um, teachers, pastors, uh, we do bishops, because so the bishop is a pastor, pastor, and we do uh, evangelists, the prophet, and apostles, okay? So we have to know how to lock in together, okay? When you're elevating leaders, okay? How do you begin to navigate through the process? So uh, we do table. Yeah, table is preparation for ministry. Ministry means service, serving. So it says, then the 12 summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. That's what the apostles said they would do. We're going to give ourselves continue to prayer and ministry of the word. So that's where I spend my time. Prayer and ministry of the word. Do you see how long I've been on here? Three hours, four minutes away from four hours. Because I want to make sure that I spend this day, the 11th of April 2024, to begin to give you a great construct uh, to help you to know how to follow instructions so you can construct wisely, effective, and productive. Because the harvest is ripe, the labors are few. Jesus said, "You look at the you look at the at the um, sky, and he said there's four months for the harvest, but behold, the harvest is ripe." So all hands on deck. We have to get things done. So it says here that the apostles gave themselves continue to prayer and minister the word. There's a lots of work that I need to get done here. Lots of work. But right now, you know, certain things need to be in place more tightly. You know, um, and so the Lord told me that he's removing the obstacles away from me. He's clearing the path because... There's been some major setbacks for me, all right? So for me, it's a matter of working through those obstacles. And, you know, sometimes people try to distract me for the wrong reason uh, to do what they want to get done. And I'm like, no, 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 you know? So I have to make sure that everybody understands. When you come on my job site, I have things to do, you know? And... Um, like Paul, sometimes I have to go do some tent making. Go some do some tent making, but tent making is still a part of the ministry. You know, like now I, I go, to, I register for the public schools and I go and teach. When I do, so I can make some extra money, okay? And that when I'm out there, people get to know me. They're like, oh, wow, what, what does an apostle do? What are we touching? So, wow, what is you have your own inquiry. Yeah. So it's a great opportunity to meet others as well who are in leadership. So then the third year of the Empire School of Discipleship Masterclass, we go through ABLE. So we go from stable, then drop the S and do table, then drop the T and do ABLE. What is ABLE? Your ability to demonstrate sound biblical principles which governs tangible evidence of faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The word is tangible. Faith is substance. You have to lock in. I was reading Hebrews 2, verse 17, and it says, Jesus is the substance. Yeah, you can't be wishy-washy, dilly-dally, everywhere the wind flows, there you go. No, you have to come into a set place where you know that Jesus is the answer, 
in the morning, in the evening, daytime, whether you feel like it or you don't feel like it. Amen. You have to make sure your incident sees out of season. I have this leader that I connected with, and the Lord told me, stay connected with this leader, even if it hurts. And I'm telling you, there are times where, yeah, it hurts. Like the song said, even when it hurts like hell, I'll praise you. You know, Paul said, I bear in my body the marks of Christ. I bear, like literally, he said I was beaten. Go read 2 Second, Second Corinthians 11 about apostleship. So for those of you who are trying to run into apostleship and you're like, oh, no, apostle, blah, blah, blah. Okay, think again. Not that you should run away from it, but know that apostles, we are like, the Bible says in Corinthians we're at the end of the procession, 2 Corinthians 4. We're at the end. Hey, if you want to know how to be a true, bona fide apostle, go read first and second Corinthians. Because when Paul got into Corinth, Acts chapter 18, it was difficult in Corinth. They dragged him through the mud, they slandered him. It is tough. Okay, that's why they said the, the, the apostleship re represents the thumb. It's the shortest finger, it's the biggest finger, but it's the shortest one. Okay. So you have to get into a position, a place in your life where you know that you know that you know what you ought to know. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. And an apostle should be able to navigate through all the five offices. As Ephesians 4.11 says, Christ gave the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers and the reason that he did that was for Ephesians 4, 12 through 13, which is the goal of this ministry, which is prepare God's people, prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. The word, the word is for the work of ministry. Ministry is work. And you ought to get paid when you work. And Jesus explains how you get paid. He mentioned it in Matthew chapter 20, 1 through 16. He mentioned it also in Matthew 10. Come on, somebody. You got to get in the track with Jesus because you can't get paid if you don't follow Jesus. Jesus told Peter, Peter, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part with me. There's some, some leaders who have struck, um, cut the corners. I'm like, no, no. You don't get to cut corners with me. You've got to be fully in. You can't have one foot in, one foot out. One minute you're in, one minute you're out. No, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. Because you can cause casualties to people. Like Jonah. Jonah went on the ship to Tarshish when he knew he should have gone to Nineveh. And you cause harm to other people. You can't be so selfish about yourself. You're for and no more. That's not how it works. I've met some very selfish leaders. Selfish. All they care about themselves, their image. Just selfish. And you're just like, I don't, I don't want to be associated with you. You know, you don't even give an, an offering. You you just wanna you just wanna you just wanna just argue over stuff all the time. And when it comes for you to give an offering, you don't even give an offering. You don't even give a tithe. You don't even say, you know what? Let me sow a seed. Let me check out apostle. Let me pray for apostle. Let me send a message and say, apostle, I'm praying for you. Listen, you become a leech. The scripture says in Proverbs 30, the leech says, give me, give me. If you're talking to people, and every second that you talk to them, they are talking about give me, give me. Like, give me, give me my name. They're leeches. And you have to make sure they don't connect to you. And this is the reason why I tell people, if you're going to connect to me at this point, I have shown my, my work. My work speaks of my worth. That means if I'm going to spend time with you, you have to be paying some money. You don't get to waste my time because you just think you should do whatever you want to do when you want to do it. No. Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem, and he was not willing to stop. Jesus knew the time that he had to get certain things done. As a matter of fact, in Matthew 14, the Bible said Jesus heard, uh, Jesus, not Matthew 14, um, 
Yeah, Matthew 14. When John, John the Baptist's head was cut off, the Bible said Jesus went to secluded place, so he would cause an extra stir. So there are certain times where I may have a schedule to do something, and something happens, and the Lord says, no, it's not time. Just like Jesus did. The Bible said the Holy Spirit told Paul, don't go into Bithynia and Phrygia. Now, this is important. We'll stop here for a moment, because I hear the Holy Spirit tell me to say this. When Even though the Apostle Paul could not go into Bithynia and Phrygia, guess who got in? I'm glad you asked. Guess who got into Bithynia? Peter. Let's go there. I was reading the scripture um, probably last year sometimes, or maybe. You know, I'm always reading the word. And I was like, oh my word. Peter got into an area where Paul couldn't get into. The Holy Spirit did not, did not think that Paul was the best. Sometimes based on your culture, your education, or your background, it may not be wise for you to go into a certain region. Sometimes you have to send others to stand with you, okay? And you can't be jealous and biased. Don't sleep on your babies. How do you say that you're a mother or a father in the faith and you crush your children? How do you become like Saul? Saul wanted to kill David. David grew up in your house. He served you. How do you get jealous of your members? How do you get jealous of your own children? I don't understand that. How do you not invite somebody to speak because of the color of your skin? How do you become a bigot? Bigotry, racism, discrimination. When, come on. If you don't have it, you just don't have it. But give somebody else who is competent. That's who the apostles invited to find seven men, not a million men, seven men that was of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit, glory to God, and they have wisdom. They were competent, not complacent. There are too many of you want to hold offices with a title, but you're not willing to fill the office when it's necessary. Come on, somebody. There are many of you want to cling to me and, and, and so forth. And then Jesus said it to the disciples. When you're like, Lord, oh, Jesus sent the disciples out. And they came back and said, oh, Lord, they're, 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 um, they're reaching out for us. Jesus said, no, don't be surprised that demons are subjected to you in my name, in his name. He said, well, be happy that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Because not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter. The Bible said, only those who do the will of the Lord. You have to be doing the will of the Lord. And the Bible said in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 10, desire to know what the will of God is. Because you can be walking outside the will of God. That's why timing is everything. Timing, timing. There's so many of you right now, you're on the wrong road. And you don't wonder why things are frustrating for you. You're just not, it's not getting done. Why? Because you got off at the wrong exit. You allowed your temper tantrum, your anger, your bitterness, your, your mouth to get you in trouble that people can't respect you anymore. You're a liar, you're a cheater, you're disrespectful, you're dishonoring, you, you, you are a thief. You rob time, you rob money. The Lord said, give your tithes and offering, and you still go and so praise them. The Lord said, sow this over here, and you eat your seed. The Bible said, never come before a leader empty-handed. Never come before a leader empty-handed. And the Bible also says in Luke 16, if you don't know how to serve in another person's house, God will never give you your own house. I'm paraphrasing it. Go read about the manager who was about to get fired because he wasted his master's things. There are too many of too many of you. You have wasted time. You have sabotaged your own destiny. And like Judas, 
Jesus says to you right now, whatever you do, do it quickly. Do it quickly. Amen. Come on, somebody. Do it quickly. There's some things that the enemy is trying to throw me off at, but I'm telling you, mm -mm, I shall live and not die and live to declare the glory of God. I'm going to tell the devil where he ends and where I begin. Come on, somebody. Because the devil's going to try everything to throw you off. The devil's going to try. You know what our main thing is as women? Where Satan comes and beguiled you and said, did God say? Did God really say? And if the devil can get you away from that, then he carries you on a tangent, then you become a prostitute for everybody that can come in. Those who come in, run in and run out. No, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. You don't get to run in and run out. Okay, okay, come on somebody. Come on somebody. The Bible said Judas was a part of the apostolic ministry and he bought a field with his own blood. Because he betrayed Jesus. When you come to know that in my life and integrity and you go against confidential matters and you go and plant discord, thank you Holy Spirit, I'm coming out to you right now in the name of Jesus. So 1 Peter, 1 Peter, uh, the Bible said that um, Peter was called into Bithynia. Paul couldn't get into Bithynia. But Peter get in. Peter got in. Okay? So the Bible tells us very clearly that, uh, let me see here where it is. I found it the other day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, 1 Peter chapter 1, I believe. Let me see. Yeah. First Peter chapter 1, the same area that Paul couldn't get into, Peter got in. It says in Peter chapter 1, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims of the dispersion, the dispersion or the diaspora, right? The dispersion in Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. I want to talk to all of you. When you're putting out publications out there, learn to address the people properly with your posting, okay? Who you are, where you are, what you represent. Don't just put things out there. Start to look at what you're posting. My husband told me, shared with me, Several years ago, he said, sweetie, image is everything. I was taking a selfie. And my husband said, sweetie, image is everything. You can be taking a picture of yourself, but there may be something in your background that doesn't represent what you're trying to show. And people will see what is in the background rather than what you're trying to show them. So it's called integrity. So for me, I recognize that I was creating the image and likeness of God, and the image and likeness of God, according to, of, and likeness of God, according to Romans chapter 8, 28, and 29, specifically 29, the image of God is found in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He is the image of God. He has declared God the Father to us. So I need to look like Christ, walk like Christ, talk like Christ. And that's what the Bible said in 1 John chapter 4, try every spirit to see if it's of God. Try every spirit to see whether or not it's of God. And those who profess, verse 2 of 1 John 4, those who profess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, physically, he came to earth. Amen. If you accept, believe, and confess Jesus Christ, you are born of the spirit. So you have to know your spirit, the demonic spirit, and you have to know above and beyond the person of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And the Holy Spirit is going to always highlight Jesus. God the Father and God the Son, the Holy Spirit will always bring attention to the word which is in Christ Jesus. Amen? All right. Now, the Lord has put this in my heart to, to talk about um, uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 6, about those who are, you're not having an integrity, an integral lifestyle. Okay? I, and I want to preface this because I'm hearing the Lord say something. You know, Elijah, 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 
Elijah, I was training one of my mentees um, the other day with the scripture. It is from um, the book of Kings. Let's find it. And it says that Elijah was told by God to go to the widow. Go to the widow. I'm going to find where it is because this is important. Okay? Uh, it is in um, Glory to God. Yeah. It is in 1 Kings 17, uh, 7 through 16. I'm just going to paraphrase it, I believe. I think that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Praise God. Pray for Mother Apostle. Amen. But yeah, it is important uh, for you and I to recognize it. So Elijah, Elijah was um, set to go um, to a widow. The Lord says, go to Zarephath, go to the widow, go to the widow that's there, okay? And you're going to stay there with her until the family is over. So that widow, who is a widow? A widow is somebody who her, her husband died, the spouse. What if you read 1 Timothy chapter 5, Paul tells Timothy that in the household of faith, who are the widows that need to be on the church list of distribution of food? And so forth. Those who are 60 and older. But he said if you're younger than 60, he told Timothy, don't put them on the widow's list because eventually they get all sexual and sensual and they want to go marry again. But Paul also talks about the importance of those who are in the church. If you, if you have, if you have your parents and you and your parents get older, we as children should take care of our parents. It's like my, my amazing father. God bless him, Bishop Michael Williams. He's, he's going to be 70 years old in July. My father wants to retire at 70. He announced that for like 10 years. Now, when he gets to 70, he wants to stop doing his... He does um, tree service, climb trees and stuff like that. Okay. Now, there are things that my dad may do, and I'm trying to understand it still, Okay. Because my dad is the baby boomer generation. And baby boomers, the way baby boomers think and operate at times, the Lord tell me to look at, uh, for the baby boomer, look at Jacob and Moses, okay? So for me, I recognize um, how to navigate to that. And it's sometimes a challenge, but it's my dad. It's my dad. He's the only parent I have left, okay? He's my own. My mom passed away when I was 12. Okay, she was 46. So my daddy, he, listen, I am willing to go the extra mile. And God has been teaching me in my generation, I'm the millennial generation, that represents the five, Esther, Mary, the mother of Christ, um, Ruth, and um, Daniel, and um, who am I missing? Uh, let me see. And Joseph. Okay, so Joseph was away in Egypt. I'm away from my family. My brothers and sisters, you're all there. Yeah, I'm away from them. So here's the reality. I, I realize I can't get up and do everything like they do. Okay, they're in Florida and all of that stuff. And, but you know what happened? There are set times where the Lord would say, okay, I'm going to release you to go. And there's certain things that I know what God has assigned me to do for my dad. I know that. I know my assignment. I understand my assignment. And so I don't get mixed up with my brothers and sisters. I'm like, listen, you know your lane. I know my lane, okay? And I've been working on that with my dad directly because I understand my assignment, okay? When my dad was here for Kingdom Takeover Apostolic Gathering, he said something that was so profound and important to me, and I only got to have told him because I know when the Lord told me that. My dad says, Joseph, Joseph brothers almost convinced their father, Jacob, that Joseph was eaten up by some animals. They, they brought Joseph clothes of many colors, and it with blood on it. And showed it to their father to make him think. To make him think that Joseph was dead. 
And I'm telling you something. I want to talk to those of you with that you have family members in ministry with you. You have to be careful that you don't have familiar spirits. And that's why it's just a true discipleship. You have to hate mama and father, everything in this life, even your own life, to come follow Christ. Okay? Because you can go through um, Cain killing Abel. Cain killed Abel because Cain was told by God to repent and offer a better gift to God. But Cain was so jealous and hateful and he invited his brother and guess what? I'm sure his brother just believed him and came and he killed his brother. So I realize in my life right now, in order for me to see my dad enjoy, he, my dad want to live till he's 100 years old. I let my I led my grandfather, my dad's father, to Christ at 91 years old. My father and I baptized my grandfather, the late Isaac Williams, in Jamaica, Runaway Bay. Listen, and I'm telling you something, three generations, and the Lord showed me what I need to be focused on. My grandfather, my dad's father, showed me and told me what I need to focus on for my dad. So guess what happened? I am willing to do what I need to do. Amen. I remember telling my dad from a young age, I knew that when it comes to the international um, frontier for him, I would be the one to fulfill that. Because what happened? I, I saw my dad when, when I was a young girl growing up from Jamaica. My dad, my dad, glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me see if I find a picture of him. I, I think I still have it there. Thank you, Lord. I thought I still had it there for Kingdom from Kingdom to you. Anyways, my dad, there he is. He's on the wall over here. I left it up there. My dad, okay, he was here, right over here, my little daddy, my sweet little daddy. Okay, have it there so I could see me right there. I'm going to keep that there. Okay, my sweet little daddy. Okay, um, my dad, we used to pray. And sometimes he'll be praying and fasting. My dad, from Jamaica all the way to the United States and travel, my dad has always helped to pioneer churches and ministries. He has poured into so many lives. Okay? He's a true spiritual father. Fasting and prayer. Growing up as a child, my dad used to, when, when, when they have fasting and prayer, all five of us as children, we have to be in church, young kids, fasting and prayer. My dad would have certain days that he fast and pray that even though he's getting money, people are offering money, they can't get no business done until he is finished with his prayer and fasting. Lock it down, okay? So I, I'm trained like that. And so they used to sometimes they'll put my dad off to the side to pray while they continue with service. And I used to be embarrassed that they would do that to my dad. And I, I, and I remember in my heart as a child, I would say, one day I'm going to have a place where my dad could come, pray, speak as long as he want to. Okay? Why? you got to see where God gives you dreams and potential. So my dad want to live to he's 100. And I'm willing to do whatever is possible to see that happens. Amen. And so... Amen. I listen to his thoughts. Sometimes it's a lot. <laughs> Sometimes a little bit. Amen. The other day, my dad, he was in England, Europe. Uh, one of his sisters, the youngest sister, was celebrating her birthday. And Aunt, Aunt Natalie and my dad was there. It was so cute seeing my dad. He looked so young and just nice. He looked so happy. I was so happy for him. He actually... Um, was there in England on the little carriage chariot. They said he danced, my dad danced so much that they were just wondering if he was still his age. And he said he is, okay. So, okay, you have a point. But he's just so happy to see him being happy. And I tell everybody, if my dad is happy, I'm happy. If you're happy, daddy, whatever makes you happy, okay? <laughs> I'm good. Now, like Joseph, I must be honest, like Joseph, and where Jacob came to Egypt um, and saw Joseph, and Joseph was still busy working. So I realized the Lord told me to keep staying put. And every now and then, I, you know, I could go visit my dad and, and you know, spend time with him. But 
certain times I need to navigate away from certain things and people, certain people. So I've been very, very intentional. And the Lord has been showing me how to be wise as servant, harness as dove. Amen. Because there was a time that even the mother of Jesus and his brothers came to get him because they thought he was beside himself. And she said, who's my mother? Who's my brother? Who's my sister? Those who do the will of the Lord. So I realized that I, if I just follow family and friends, sometimes that can hinder me. So the Lord says, don't allow that to get in your way anymore. So, you know, the great thing is my dad was here in March. He was here and... My dad is going to turn 70 on the 15th of July, and he wants a set, set, um, you know, celebration and all that. And so there's a set thing that I have in my heart that I've been working on. And at the end of the day, guess what happens? At the end of the day, you know, I'm just focused on my part. And I realized, the Lord said to me the other day, your dad is going to be 70 years old for a full year. <laughs> Just like David, David um, retired. David retired um, from from his job as king at seventy. Second Samuel chapter five. So, anyways, I have been spending some time to get my brain renewed. And so, you know, just seeing my dad little by little. You know, he's yeah, we're in April, so he has like May, June, then July. I mean, three months. And then he's going to be 70 years old. So for those of you, hey, we're going to be celebrating my dad's birthday. And I want to make sure that you all are going to celebrate with me. That we can get him a good, a good, I would like to see if all of you could, if I could get, let me see. I'm going to, I'm going to run a campaign for my dad. Those of you can join with me. That by my dad's 70th birthday, if we can raise, okay, let me see. Let me see. I'm, I'm going to have to divide this up. By my dad's 70th birthday, I'm going to give a challenge. Okay. I want to see if we could raise an offering for my dad's 70th birthday. I want to see if we could raise a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, he deserves it. I want to see if all of you can join with me that by now in July 15th, we can raise a substantial amount of a hundred thousand dollars for my spiritual and my biological dad, Bishop Michael Williams. And if you're able to do that with me, I am going to make sure that we organize a trip for you to the nation of Jamaica and to stay there at Mom's Village Resort. I'm going to set up a package and I'm going to invite all of you that we're able. I'm going to set up some unique ways and opportunities, but I want by the 15th of July, I want us to raise together $100,000 honoring my dad, my bishop, my spiritual father, my biological father. Like King David in 2 Samuel 5, we get a hundred thousand US dollars. Okay, so wherever you are in the world, I want you to join with me for that challenge. All right, I'm gonna make my flyer, I'm gonna put it out there, and we have three months to do it. So from Monday, I think mean Monday's gonna be the 15th. Monday the 15th. Okay, so if we get if we get 70 people to give fifteen hundred dollars, if we get seven zero people to give uh to, to give um uh fifteen hundred dollars, that's a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, we could divide up in so many different ways, okay. But if you're able to say, okay, we're going to lock in, okay, to raise a hundred, if I get a thousand people. OK, 
okay? If I get a thousand people to give one hundred dollars, that's a hundred thousand dollars. Just saying. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay. Or the other way around, if I get a hundred people to give a thousand dollars, that's a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, we could just go on and on. I'm just saying. Praise the Lord. Okay, but I want us to really lock in. If I can find a hundred people, and maybe you may say, Apostle, I have less, but I want you to go for the goal. We have three months to do it. On your mark, get set, go. I want to raise a hundred thousand dollars for my dad for his 70th birthday, which is July 15th. And I want us to be able to say from God's Lighthouse Tabernacle, International Ministries, and the partnership together, we have been able to honor and you sow a seed and you honor my father. And you're going to get the fatherhood blessing. Amen. Jesus said, I do nothing unless I see my father do it. And I'd love to make sure my father's birthday is going to be on a Monday. On a Monday. Okay? So either way you want to take it. If you want to be a part of the um, thousand people that gives a hundred dollars or part of the hundred people that give a thousand dollars, Either way, okay, we, we want to even have some surplus, okay? Uh, but I want to be able to see how we are able to start to work on that together. And that's going to be the gold. That's going to be the gold. And I'm going to put it out there where we're going to raise that $100,000 for my dad's 70th birthday and give him the opportunity to be fully retired from all his hard labor. I'm telling you, my dad climbed trees. Like sometimes I'm like, Dad, you kind of choose like you're a squirrel, you know, like going up there. My dad is 70, and for him to be working that hard is a lot. But he loves his family, he loves what he's doing, and he's building a beautiful place there in Jamaica, Mom's Village Resort and Business Center. And so you got a great place to vacation in Jamaica. And if you be a part of this with me, we're able to schedule your time to stay at the resort in Jamaica there, and I want you to join with me. Amen. Praise God. All right. Amen. All right. That just came out. The Lord, that was a, a whole new conversation. <laughs> Amen. Well, praise God. Praise God for that. Amen. Hallelujah. To God be all the glory for the great things he has done. Amen. All right. So, love daddy. Love my daddy. Love my daddy, daddy, daddy. My daddy. Okay, so next thing is, okay, let's move on. Okay, I get excited. Yeah, the Lord has gave me the scripture I need to read to help each of you to really understand what it's like to be integral in what you're doing. Have integrity, okay? It's important to be integral. And um, thank you, Holy Spirit. And it's in Proverbs chapter 6. Let's go to Proverbs 6. The Lord wants to do this, and I'm going to try to finish it up after this. Proverbs chapter 6, the Lord gave me this scripture. This is about when we're preparing for ministry, we went from the stable table to able, okay? But the Lord said there are, there are six, six things the Lord hates. This is Proverbs 6, 16 through 19, okay? Proverbs chapter 16, to Proverbs chapter 6, 16 through 19, it says... These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. Number one, a proud look. Number two, a lying tongue. The Lord hates it. Number one, a proud look. Number two, a lying tongue. Number three, hands that shed innocent blood. Number four, a heart that devises wicked plans. Number five, feet that are swift in running to evil. Number six, a false witness who speaks lies. And number seven, and one who sows discord among brethren. One who sows discord among brethren. You gotta watch that tongue. There's too many of you out there right now that you are, your, your, your teeth is set on the edge. You want to gossip. You want to tear other people down. I will share none of it with you. Amen. 
Come on, somebody. Okay, there's six things God hates. Yea, seven is abomination. And the abomination of desolation. Okay, and you have to get into a place in your life where you start to respect the anointing on people's life and you don't just look at people and think you know what you're talking about. Amen, glory to God. Even if they hurt you, even if they hurt you, and maybe most of the time people are not even thinking that they, they don't even know that they hurt you. Yes, there's sometimes people have to be called out. Like the scripture says, pause, pause to Timothy, to, to, pause to Peter to his face. And say so you're being hypocritical because you almost did one of us trick. Okay, okay, where well, you show, and you know, Peter has his little moments. Okay, but that, but they had earned respect with each other that he can go and say, listen, I want you to recount that statement. Jesus rebuked Peter publicly. I'm not talking about rebuke publicly. I'm talking about where you know that what you're saying is not going to help the body of Christ. It's going to send more confusing message than it ought to already. And the harvest is from so the labors are few. Come on. I mean, so my dad said something that was so powerful. He said they almost, the, the brothers of Joseph almost convinced the father, Jacob, that Joseph was dead. They brought the clothing with blood on it. David could not build the house of God because he had blood on his hands. God said, this was blood on your hands. Like, your, your son is going to build the tabernacle. He's going to build the temple, not you. So there's the Bible says the sins of the fathers visit up to the third and fourth generation. Okay? So this is very, very important. How we navigate the process. Amen? We have to make sure we understand what God is saying. Amen? Hallelujah, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay, I think we're going to wrap it all in, wrap it up, and put it in a bow tie. Okay. So you want to make sure that you, I, I believe that today have been so, so good. Wow. Like, I didn't know that the Lord had all of this in mind. So you're going to go from your stable to your table to your able. The third year with me in ministry is your able. Your ability to demonstrate sound biblical principles which govern tangible evidence of faith in Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. And based on 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5, the Amplified Version said, But as for you, be clear-headed in every situation. Stay calm and cool and steady. Endure every hardship without flinching. Do the work of an evangelist. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill the duties of your ministry. Fulfill the duties of your ministry. And it takes, it takes three years. It's like a person starts to read and move around after three years properly. When you see an organization, if you could meet a, an organization of any kind that's been around for three years healthily, most likely it is going to thrive. Okay? So, I want to encourage you, and this is the reason why when I'm training leaders who go from one year to three years, to five years, to seven years, to ten years, to twenty years, then we go to forty years, okay? We begin to speed it up. So, it's important. After forty years in the wilderness, you should be able to come out and so forth. So, I'm 43 years old. I knew that by the time I got to 40 years old, I knew that I will be completely ready to fulfill all of God's will for my life. All of it. I knew it. Why? How did I know it? Thank you that you asked. When you go to the book of um, Acts chapter 7, Acts chapter 7, and you go down to verses, um, which is, this is where um, Stephen was given a careful account of the history of the church and the way um, God was working all along. And he gave a clear testimony about Moses. Chapter 7. Um, from verses... Uh, 
from verse 17. It says here, but when the time of the promise drew near, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt till another king arose who did not know Joseph. This man dealt treacherously with our people and oppressed our forefathers, making them expose their babies so that they might not live. This is the education system that we're in right now. The education system that we're in. And this is the reason why I am so adamant when it comes to my children. A lot of Isaiah and Micah, because you can't give what you don't have. And I'm looking and I'm working on them every single day. I am working on them. Come on, somebody. I mean, I'm going, running through the mill. It's like, okay, let's see. Did we get that? Okay, I need to work on that. It's like yesterday I had to work more on how I'm going to discipline them in a way that they have choices that if you don't obey me if you walk away from me if you talk back to me whatever here are the consequences okay and i have to be rewinding what that may look like so i have to go look out there with others who have teenagers to see how they have done it before okay i'm always researching one of the things you know about my life you'll get to know about me i'm well informed when i make decisions i make well informed decisions my husband says it a few times if anybody want to win under pressure call it sweet Call sweetie in. So, you know, I, you know, I'll roll with the punches. I'll roll with the punches. Come on, somebody. Okay. So, when we're looking at this uh, process here, amen, we have to walk through it properly. Amen. We have to walk through the process properly. And um, it says here, this man, verse 19, this man dealt treacherous with our people and oppressed our forefathers, making them expose their babies so that they might not live. Verse 20, at this time, Moses was born. Moses was born and was well pleasing to God. And he was brought up in his father's house for three months. Okay? For three months. But when he was set out, but when he but when he was set out, Pharaoh's daughter took him away and brought him up as her own son. Okay, listen to this. And Moses, verse 22, listen to this. This is about education. And Moses was well learned. Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. And was mighty in words and deeds. There's so many of you that are preaching about Moses stammered and he stuttered. And you, you misunderstand and he was like, dee, 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 dee. no. The Bible said Moses was mighty in words and deeds. Words. He was a great contender. He knows how to speak the language. But when you are coming into the kingdom of God to transfer the principles from what you witnessed in the world system, and now God is saying, I want you to go in my name. I want you to take this whole body of work. I want to put it over here. It's a whole other conversation, and Moses had to learn how to let God write the Ten Commandments on his heart. And that's what the Bible said. He will remove the heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh that we can feel and know God for ourselves. Okay? I'm not going to be veiling my face and covering over my face because I'm shining so brightly. No. I'm going to make sure you know the word for yourself because the word is Jesus Christ. Amen? So the Bible says, verse 23 of Acts 7, now when Moses was 40 years old, this is what he did at 40 years old. So those of you in your 40s, this is a turning point for you. Now when Moses was 40 years old, it came into his heart. It came into his heart. That means his heart was available. It came into, and the Bible says, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. As a person thinking in your heart, so you are. It's called your character. It's called your integrity. Now when he was 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, to visit his people. Moses grew up in Egypt, and now he went to go visit the Hebrew people, where they were located, because Egypt is big. Okay, so don't set out your nation. Don't set out your people. Doesn't matter how long where God called you into. Listen, I'm telling you, this is important.
important. A great example of that. I was going to Jamaica. They were going to Jamaican flag. There's a seat for my Jamaican flag, okay? And guess what? My mother was buried there in Jamaica. And I reached out to my brother. My brother bought up the house to my dad where my mom is buried. And guess what? I'm like, okay, I need to invest. So I'm investing in my childhood home, lots of land, going back there to build a work in honor of my mom, the late Mabel Tracy Parker, who is a great, amazing, prolific teacher and leader. Yeah. Okay. She was in education. She taught young people. What a great way to use the land space and said, okay, we're going to build on it. And God is so amazing because the Lord allowed me to meet this lady, my husband and I, who I took, took my husband along to Barbados where his dad grew up. And I met this lady who was 100 years old. She was adopted in the Hall of the Dane for her contribution to education. She built a school onto her house. And thousands and thousands, including my husband, went through that lady's um, school, okay? And that lady taught for 70 years. If my mom was in the earth today, she would have been 77 years old, okay? She was a little older than my dad. Okay, so now the point is, my life, in God's willing, amen, I'm looking to spend my time in Jamaica honoring my mom. And she, my mom was born one day before what we know as Christmas Day. My mom is um, Christmas Eve, December 24th. So there are certain things that I work on in order to get things ready, get the land ready, because like Moses, like Moses, he went to go visit his brethren. The sad thing is his brethren weren't ready for him. Because sometimes people don't recognize that if you're on the same level with the person, if, you don't, if you're not educated, if you don't have a, a fainting person can't help another fainting person. And there's too many of you in your family and in your community and friends. You come from the same nation and you're not willing to work together. You come from the same family and you bite and bite. You, you devour each other. Like, how do you do that? That don't make no sense to me. Why would you hate on your child? Why would you hate on your spouse? Why would you hate on your friend? You went to the same school together. You all were like orphans together. And you now have this opportunity to work together. And you, and you just hate on them. I don't get that. I, I don't understand it. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm like, Lord. I mean, we can't. We can't be that stupid. Like you're fighting against each other. Okay. So the Bible says now when, when Moses was 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel, and seeing one of them, and seeing one of them, See, one of them suffer wrong. He defended, he, Moses, defended and avenged him who was oppressed and struck down the Egyptian. Moses was willing to take his entire degree. All of his, it's just like when I travel to countries. I tell people, don't take it for granted. Because you may see me on the big screen, but guess what? When I come into your nation, be respectful. When you reach out to me from your nation, be respectful. Don't think you and I are buddy, buddy, chummy, chummy, okay? I am very down to earth, but there's a line of demarcation. There's a boundary line that you don't cross. Whether I'm near or far, okay? Come on. I've worked hard and got all my degrees. And I live out my office. I'm just saying. Okay. So, make sure you come correctly. Come correctly. Okay. 
Okay, so you can go to Act 7 and see where Moses, the turning point for him was. Where was the turning point for Moses? You're going to see that. Okay? I was talking to one of my sisters and I was saying to her, listen, I have moved here. I've lived here in Cleveland, Tennessee for over 20 years. So even though we, we are sisters and we are connected, like you have to know me again because even though you have seen me, you have not lived with me. So my life and my thought process, what you may remember of me, I have evolved, I've grown, I've learned, I've been around other people, you have been around other people. I did the same thing with my dad one time. I said, Daddy, you know, we're standing beside each other, but you came from a different route to get to the same destination. So we can't, we don't, don't, don't sink the ship to save the boat. Just saying, right? We can't sink the ship to save the boat. I've talked to my family, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, brothers and sisters, friends. I'm like, why? Why? I have this friend, and whenever I talk to him, sometimes he really annoys me. I'm like, how do you get to this place where you become so selfish to know that you have come through such hard, rough life? You tell me your story, and then when it comes to a moment for you to settle down and humble yourself and let's work together properly and go help other people, you're just stuck on you. Like, get away from here. There are times he gets on my nerves, but at the end of the day, you know, like Jesus and Peter, we friends, you know. Yeah, that part. Sometimes family members, I get hard with them. I'm like, sometimes my husband and I, we'll get into it. Amen. The Bible says, angry and sin not. Yeah, that part. Okay. Sometimes other leaders, you're talking with them, and you're just like, how do you get to this space that you think you're, I remember I had this one pastor, when I came to Cleveland, Tennessee, I would hear this pastor share his testimony. He said whenever he came to Tennessee, he didn't know what he was supposed to do. And he was praying and saying, God, if you don't tell me what I need to do, just leave me alone. And he, he, told, he told his story. That was a pastor. And I'm like, I, everything he asked me to do, I'll do it. Everything that man asked me to do, I'll do it. And even when I told him the problems I was having by the very same people that he had in his administration, he didn't take care of it. He acted like he didn't, he didn't, I don't know what he was doing. But the level of hypocrisy, it hurt me. Okay? And I remember one day the Lord gave me a word. The Lord woke me up 3 a.m. that morning. And the Lord gave me a set word. And the Lord said, write it down. And the Lord also gave me an option. He says, the Lord said, either you can fill out this form to be a part of that ministry and cap your anointing, or you can come and start the work I tell you to start, and the world is your parish. And I told the Lord, Lord, I'm really scared, but I'm going to take your way. I'm going to go start, because that's the reason why I came to Tennessee in the first place. And, and this particular pastor that was supposed to encourage me is like, you know, he was just running me around the mills. The place that I paid my tithes and offering. The place that I dedicated everything. And I remember the Lord gave me a word. The Lord gave me a set word. And the Lord says, and in that day, the Lord gave me the scripture. It's in the book of, um, it's in the book of Isaiah. And in that day, the yoke shall be broken off your neck because of the anointing, because of the fatness of your neck. And no one will make you afraid. And I, I remember when the Lord gave me the word, I told, I was like, Lord, I don't even know how I'm going to tell this man this message. Because, you know, I mean, they have power. Just like Samuel told the Lord, Lord, if you tell me to go anoint somebody else, Saul would hear and kill me, right? Because people... Do and everywhere you go, they have the hitman, 
people behind, almost like the uh, what you call them, the um the the the, the, uh, the mafia, right? Yeah, jungle justice, you know. So you know that war. Okay, so I'm like, okay. And the Lord said, leave things to me because I'm about to cut out the wicked. I'm about to cut off the wicked. And I remember the Lord gave me a set word to give the person. I saw, I saw in this particular ministry, I saw these, it was like an alligator, but I saw the, 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 the frames of different people on the wall. But I, it looked like an alligator. And it's now I'm understanding, even in the vision, what alligators do. They try to suffocate you and bring you down until you die out. Okay? Just saying. One big bite and you're consumed. So I want to talk to those of you that God is calling you to start your ministry. Be careful who you go to and tell. See how public I am with what I'm saying? That we're not hiding anything. Okay? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Don't run with somebody because they have money or they look good on the outside. But when you get inside, you realize they're full of what um, they're full of um. Uh, they're dry, so whitewashed, so pulchers, full of dead men bones. Be careful. Pray and fast. Anything you're going to establish for God, you have to be in much prayer and fasting. Go read my story on my website. How everything, I, I wait on God. I wait in God. I pray and fast. Because if I don't hear God, I'm not moving. Yesterday, yesterday the Lord told me to go to this place. And after I fasted, after three, the Lord said, I want you to go now. And when I went to that place, the person was shifting to a new place. And yesterday was their last day. If I didn't obey the Holy Spirit, I would have missed the whole thing. I'm just telling you, when you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean unto your understanding in all your ways, your knowledge, he'll make your path straight. He'll make it straight. He's going to clear the way. And I remember the Lord gave me a sure word for this pastor. And I, I told him that I had a word that I needed to speak. It wasn't that, it wasn't about what I needed to tell him, but it was about a word that God gave me. And he told me, he says, I want you to come down close to the altar time and I want you to come and I'll give you an opportunity. I, didn't, I, I wasn't trying to go up to speak about the word. I wasn't trying to... Um, Go up and speak in the public. Public. The Lord has told me to give the person the word. So for me, I didn't know. You know, I'm not the leader, so I'm not going to go up there. And I remember, you know, because the person had switched me out before. Okay, the person had switched me out before, and and it wasn't good. Okay. And, and, and sometimes people don't know how they're affecting you. They may do one thing and it can just mess you up completely, right? If you're not careful. And that's why you have to you have to let the Lord, you have to let the Lord show you the hearts of people because some people can just get in their flesh. And we all, if it's all of us can get in our own flesh and and and, and, and make a decision and try to put God on top of it. But God will say, No, I don't have to. The, the Bible says every good and every perfect gift comes down from God. Amen. So don't be lying on the Lord at times. Some of you say God said it. God didn't say that. You said it. And then you want God to, 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 to endorse your shenanigans. That's not how it works, okay? But I remember the Lord gave me the word, and I wrote it down, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, what am I going to do? And so the Lord, I was like, I went down. The Lord opened up the door for me, and I went down, and I said, I want to give you this. But he didn't call me up. Like he said he was. I could see his face turn flush at the last minute. And I remember after service, you know, he was telling me, oh, one day I'll give you an opportunity to speak. I'm like, I don't need a place to speak. I just want to tell you what thus says the Lord. And I remember, I, I mean, the righteous indignation of God came up in me. And I said, Pastor, you know, I called his name. I said, Pastor. I've heard you share your testimony that when you came to Cleveland, Tennessee, you didn't know what you were called to do and how you fasted and prayed till God sent somebody. And I said, I heard you share your testimony. And here I am under your leadership. And I've come back and forth over and over. And everything you tell me to do, I follow through. And, and you keep giving me the run around. 
And I said, and he, and he, he just sat down. He stumbled back and he sat down. I said, the Lord says, in that day, the yoke will be broken off my neck. And no one will make me afraid. He came up, he came up with the door and he kept on saying, I said, no one will make me afraid. No one. I was agitated. I was broken hearted. I heard, I heard Michelle Obama share her story that one of the counselors in her school, when she was applying to go to Princeton, they, they, were like, they, they told her, oh, a counselor, your advisor in your school is telling you, oh, you're not Princeton material. That's so rude. I'm telling you, the, the Bible said we, should, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but principles and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. There's some people set in place that they're there to try to kill your dreams. Your God-given dreams. And that's why God began a good work in you. He's able to complete it until the day of his return. I heard Steve Harvey share the same thing. They asked everybody to write down what you want to become in life. He said, I want to be on TV. And the teacher called him up, knowing that he stuttered. He stammered. And invited him and said, let me see you write this TV. And he said he was up there breaking down. He thought the lady was going to encourage him. But he said his mother was a Sunday school teacher. They were constantly encouraged. And he ended up on TV, what, every day a week. And he said every, every time he was set, every Christmas, he would send a flat screen TV to the, to the teacher who told him that you would, you see anybody in your neighborhood on TV? How are you going to be? Wait, what, what? Embarrass him. I'm telling you, you have some, you have some adversaries set in some areas, and you have to cast those imaginations down. You have to tell the devil, stay in hell, because Jesus took the key to death and hell, and there's nothing you can do. Come on, somebody. Tell the devil, you may have tried to do certain things, and, and God may have given you a little time to see if you're going to change your ways, but obviously you're just stuck on you're stuck like Pharaoh with your heart and heart to think you the bomb from the bomb.com when my God is greater than you. I don't give the devil credit. I, I know he's there. The Bible says don't ignore that he's there. Don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. Don't, don't act like the devil doesn't exist. Okay? Because he does exist. And he's prowling around. The Bible says he's sober, be vigilant. Because the adversary of the devil prowls around seeking whom he may devour. But the devil can't devour me. I'm hidden Christ in God. I'm fully honored. He can't touch my husband, my children. Listen, I'm telling you something. We go in hardcore. Fight for your family. Come on, somebody. I'm not, I'm not a weak-willed woman. So the Bible said Moses was 40 years old. It came to pass in his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel, and seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended and avenged him who was oppressed and struck down the Egyptian. For he supposed that his brethren would have understood. In your overstanding, make sure you understand what you're standing over. Those same children you're teaching in the public schools or private school, one day they're going to be grown up to become the future. Be careful how you treat your children. For you suppose that his brethren would have understood that God would deliver them by his hand, but they did not understand. And the next day he appeared, Moses appeared to two of them as they were fighting and tried to reconcile them. Moses is trying to reconcile two of the same people from the same nation, from the same tribe of people. You say you're a Christian and you're fighting another Christian. That don't make no sense. If you don't even have the education and you don't have the skills in that part of business, why are you going to argue with somebody who knows the intricate details of what you need? Paul had a lawyer on his team. Paul had a doctor on his team. Why are you going to argue with people?
Come on, somebody. Help me out. Somebody help me. I need help. Glory to God. So the word said, suppose that brethren, he supposed that the brethren would have understood, would have understood that God would deliver them by his hand. By his hand, Moses. Moses' hand. But they did not understand, and the next day he appeared to two of them as they were fighting and tried to reconcile them, saying, Men, you are brethren, you're brethren, you're brethren. Why do you wrong one another? Psalm 133 said, How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Is that the order of those of Aaron's head down to his beard, down to his garment? And that's where God pronounced a blessing. Aaron dropped dead because he was doing strange fire. Then how in the world, Aaron, when Moses was feeling a little bit slow of speech, God sent Aaron to help Moses out. Why do so many of you start ministry happy with somebody and then by next week, you're like, oh, I can't stand that person. No, because you, you now, the honeymoon is over. Okay? The honeymoon is over. All these little wishy-washy, oh, God told me this, and God told me that. And then you don't even have a budget. You don't even have no integrity. You can't be dependent on. Nobody can call on you for a prayer. When you pray, you say a second prayer, and you're done. But you talk about everything else other than God. The devil is alive. Okay. Let's move on. Pray for me. Mm, okay. Praise the Lord. Okay. They didn't understand. He says, why? 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 Men, you are perfect. Why do you wrong one another? But he, he who did his neighbor wrong pushed him away. Pushed him. Not, not say excuse me. No, pushed him away. That boy. Pushed him away saying, who made you a ruler and judge over us? Moses understood the law. He knew the law of the land. He was in government. He was in politics. And you have no respect for somebody who knows the rules of your own nation. There are many of you out there that don't even know the, know the president, the name of the president of your nation. You don't even understand your whole setup of your government. And you don't even pray for your government. That's a big no-no for you to be in a place where you stand and you're called to nations and you don't know how to pray for your leader. Whether you agree with him or her or not, there's a pray for those in authority. And we can live a peaceful and quiet life. Second Timothy chapter 2. Intercession must be made for all people. I'm trying to read this book called Invading the Seven Mountains of Intercession, How to Reclaim Society Through Prayer by Tommy Fenrise. Okay? I'm trying to read it. I have so many books I'm trying to read. I must tell you. Because it's important. People that know more than you in a certain subject just submit. Submit to the process. Daniel was in Babylon and they were going to kill all the astrologers and Daniel was a part of the bunch. I mean, they were going to kill all of the magicians even though Daniel was not a magician. He was standing for God and because nobody could interpret the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. And Daniel asked for a few days to go fast and pray with his friends and he was willing to go and interpret the dream for Nebuchadnezzar and save the lives of those who were sinners. Because Daniel knew that if he could get into that government and get into that system, eventually those who were on their way to hell, now they can make a right about turn because when government sees that there's order in the kingdom of God, Nebuchadnezzar would say, anybody that doesn't serve the God of Daniel should die. Oh, somebody bless God. You are to deny your temporary gratification of permanent results. The 
Bible says these momentary and light afflictions. Amen. Glory to God. There are times I have to cry. I'm telling you, yesterday I was in so much pain. Thank God it's, it's, I'm healed now. And I'm telling you, I'm moving and the pain was throbbing. The pain was, it was so much pain. I mean, I barely moved. And, and this side, I had to be getting up. I have to be walking like this. That was yesterday. I've been trying to clean my house as well and trying to get things reorganized. Now that I'm in the public schools and, you know, I'm trying to, my children are growing and there's so many things. We're in our classes. I have things to do on campus. I have lots of work. And, and, and I have to make sure people don't waste some time. As I tell you all the time, just text me. Text me what the agenda is. Text me what you want to talk about. Because I can't give you my time when once you once you finish working with me or talking to me, I'm exhausted. I'm drained. You didn't come with no support. You didn't come with no love. You, you just come to the suck the life out of me. I can't give you that. Even my husband has to text me at this point. Husband, children, everybody. Lottie, daddy, everybody. I'm like, text me, send me what the agenda. If it's an emergency, put emergency, because I check my text all the time. I'll check it all the time. Like, even now, I'm here checking it. Did anybody reach out to me? They don't want to reach me, okay? Check my WhatsApp, check my, yeah. Send, or you can send an email, but hey, if you text me, I'll get it and make sure you put the reason for your for your call. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's like I tell the people that I owe if I owe their loans, I have like three major loans about them. I say, hey, if I can't pay you, I know you if, if a certain date pass and you don't get me, you know, such and such. But I'm gonna just tell you that I now have to um just um just uh, move beyond that, that if I don't have it, I'm not going to answer the call because I mean, I don't have it. And you're going to ask, what happened? I don't want to go over the story with you. If, if what happened is that I don't have the money, I don't want to tell you the whole thing, but at the same time, they at least we're honest with each other from day one. But I'm going to sign for the loan. I'm like, okay, listen, right now, I, I'm, I'm taking this loan because the only way you're going to borrow is because you don't have. Just like the woman with a little bit of oil was told to go borrow some vessels. I don't borrow all the time, but when I have to borrow, okay, okay, let's get in here. Okay, and I have to look at the interest rate too. Praise Jesus. Okay, just saying, praise the Lord. And so I realized that there are certain things I want to get done by a certain date. And I'm just thinking, Lord, how am I going to meet this? Because when you're talking to the people who should help you and records, they, they just have a long everlasting story. And I'm like, why are we talking? And you realize that one year passed, two years passed, three years, four years, five years, six years, seven years, and they're saying the same thing, the same broken record, the same long, sad story. Let's go back to Egypt where we had um, um, onions and garlic. Well, onions and garlic made your breath stink. How about that? Okay? So can we just please press towards the mark that the Apostle Paul said, I don't call myself to be there, but this one thing I do, forget everything that's behind. So let me tell you, sorry. Did, did I hurt you? I'm sorry. Can you accept my apology? That's it. It's called repentance. It's called humility. I have no problem in apologizing, but just don't argue when I apologize. Keep it moving. That's what Job's friends had to do. God told Job's friends, go to Job and let him pray for you and bring seven bowls and seven rams. Don't show up empty-handed because when they came to console Job, they didn't bring him anything. Just came to sit and look at it. Don't come sit looking at me. When I have work to do, I have stuff I can get done with more help. Just saying. Just saying. Don't come spy at my liberty. Okay? Bring seven bulls, seven rams. Okay, Abraham, Isaac said, Father, I see the wood, I see the fire. Why is the sacrifice? For well, the Lord will provide for himself. Yeah, let God be God. You don't be God over me. And I won't be God over you. 
If you are not the one for the job, move out the way. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on. So, yep. The Bible says, but he who did his neighbor wrong, Acts 7, he who did his neighbor wrong, verse 27, pushed him away saying, who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you did the Egyptian yesterday? Okay, so people will stand and watch you from the side to see how they can gather stuff on you. And they will come and say the negative rather than the positive. Here's what they said. He said, who made you ruler and judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you did the Egyptian yesterday? I mean, how dumb are you to realize that Moses is talking to you a positive thing? He's like, he's like your brethren work together. He's saying nothing negative. But you are so set in your own way, you are so full of pride, and pride goes before a fall, that you can't even hear anything that's been said properly. I was talking to somebody yesterday. I went to go check on um, uh, 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 something. And when I went there, the person, I could see that they would want to cause problems. But I know my rights, right? I know my rights as a wife. And I understand. But you can't allow people to get in your business. So the other person chuckled. I said, are you the one who had came by and such and such and such? And, and, he, and he said, yes. I said, what's your name? He told me his name. And I, I was saying, to, he, he's smart. And he said, oh. And I was told that you didn't pay. And I was like, I said, oh. So people will lie on you to get what they want. And they think, I tell you all the time, if you mess with my husband or my three children, die hard. Okay? You don't know the end of me. Because if you touch my husband or my children, you touch me. The Bible says, my husband shall be known in the gates because of me. My children will arise and call me blessed. Why? Because I kept my house. Come on, somebody. I don't play around. I've been married uh, between engagement and marriage. August 11th coming is going to be 23 years since I've been married. But between my engagement, 23 years with one man in my 43 years of life. Come on, somebody. I don't use familiar spirits. Don't, don't come buddy, buddy, chummy, chummy, thinking you own the right on something. Come on, somebody. Listen. Listen. I'm cracking down. Like Jesus brought the whip to the temple. He brought the whip. Crack the whip with the money changers. Don't think you can rob me and steal from me. I'm going to sit there and just lay in here while you, while you come and mess. Jesus said, one of you will betray me. We have 12 people. And guess what? One person is going down. And you will know who it is. Come on. Let's do it. So the Bible said, the Bible said, the person was willing to focus on yesterday when Paul is focused on today. Paul said, forget everything that's behind, reach forward, press towards the mark for the price of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. It's not in me, it's not in you, it's in Christ Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. So the word said, uh, it says here, they said, yeah, we'll make you rule over us. You're going to kill me like you killed the Egyptian yesterday. And the Bible said, 
Moses ended up having a track record of, of killing on his record, his well worked out record, 40 years. Moses was, was 40 years, three of his months he spent with his family and the other rest of his life, he was in full foster care parenting with Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's daughter. And somebody who is well studied and have gone through their university and gone through, not just only a church level, but they've gone through adversity and they've come to learn something. You can't slow down long enough to respect the anointing. Listen, I, I, I had to deal with one of my leaders recently. I was in Florida and the leader stopped the whole service, okay, to call me out in disrespect. What? I was living. But I told him, I said, I don't do disrespect and dishonor. And when service was over, I went down to him. I said, do not ever disrespect and dishonor me again. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? I'm not going to be bamboozled and hoodwinked into foolishness. So Moses had to flee away from the place that he grew up. Why? Because somebody misunderstood him. Somebody decide they want to bring up accusation against you. I tell the devil, bring all you got, because I'm ready. I wish you would, because my defender is Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. All of you out there trying to just do um, a little flip-flop here and there, thinking you could trick God. You can you can bring other people in, but you can't trick God. You can't trick God. Okay? Learn to behave yourself and submit to proper leadership and healthy leadership. Okay? The Bible said God is patient and long-suffering towards us because he don't want anybody to perish. So those of you just is coming soon, yes, he's coming as soon as you get to work so you can win the souls of mankind. Stop being lazy. Lazy. Every day you're making excuses. Oh, I just married a wife. Oh, oh, oh. I have my farm. I have my car. I have my shoes. Oh, my hair didn't get done. My neck. Shut up. Getting, I'm getting hot, Jesus. Just help me to calm down. Just help me to calm down. I'm telling you, I'm having a righteous indignation right now. Okay. Now calm down. Breathe. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So Moses had to flee away and dwell in the land of media. He had to start all over again. You know what I made a decision? I made a decision in my life many years before. I made a decision that when I hit 40 years old, and as a matter of fact, I told my family two years before, because every two years, God does major shifts in my life. And I told my family and friends, I said, hey, when I hit 40, I care nothing that you have to say if it's not of eternal value to help build me. Nothing, zero for the hero, okay? And I tell family and friends, I said, if I tell you that you, 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 you did something that hurt me and you say, I'm sorry, we're good. But if I tell you that it hurt me and you think you should just do it over and over again because you think you're in control of me. No, the only fruit of the spirit is self-control. I am in control of me. 
I have self-government. And so should you. As if you do something that dishonor my person, you will feel it. And I know you'll not forget it. Because I'm going to put you in your place. Since you're being a bully. And you don't have no respect for yourself, so you don't want to respect my person and my life and my leadership. You know, I'm hard at work. I've toiled, sleepless night, cries, study, up, doing what I do, work hard, been here for 20 plus years of my life, been through being called names and ridiculed, left hungry at times, destitute. Listen, you mess around with me, you feel my wrath. Glory to God. There's some people I tell them, hey, if I was dying on the side of the road, I wouldn't call you. Because the Bible says, if you see somebody needing to get warm, and you, you pray for them and say, go and be warm, and you have it in your part to give, and you don't give. Listen, man, I'm telling you right now, Lord Jesus, I'm telling you, Lord, help me right now. Help me, because help me, Jesus. Let me just pray. Let me just pray. Jesus, help me. Help me, Father. Lord, I didn't know that this is right here, but Lord, I just help me in the name of Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me. I just need help right now. My help comes from you, the maker of heaven and earth. Send your angels to minister to me right now. Minister to angels. Lord, angels, minister to the Send to the ears of salvation. We're going to ask you, Lord God. I ask you for grace in the name of Jesus. Okay. So Moses had to flee and became a dweller in the land of Eat of Median, where he had two sons. He got married, had two sons, and when 40 years had passed, he had to stay away for 40 years. And an angel of the Lord appeared to him as in a flame of fire in a bush. In the wilderness of Mount Sinai, when they Mo when Moses saw it, he marveled at the sight, and he drew near to observe the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord came to him, saying, "I am the God of your fathers." This is history. I'm the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses trembled and dared not look. He was so respectful; he dared not look. Then the Lord said to him, "Take your sandals off your feet." For the place where you're standing is holy ground. I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their groaning and have come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send you to Egypt. I will send you. I'm sent, not went. Okay? Come on, somebody. This Moses whom they rejected, saying, who made you a ruler and a judge, is the one God sent to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of an angel who appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out after he had shown wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. We honor the word of God by saying amen. So Moses had to go back to a rebellious people and I'm sure some people had died out by then and went back into a community to help to rebuild. But here I am. I learned about Cleveland, Tennessee when I was in Jamaica. I was probably, you know, I was very young. I think I don't think I was a teenager yet. My pastor, my late pastor, Pastor Talbert Williams, mentioned Cleveland, Tennessee. The Lord said, one day I will send you there. Where in the world there is? So here I am the last 20 plus years of my life. And hey, I'm here to stay. My children are born and raised here. Alana, Izzy, and Micah. And um, we're here to take over for the kingdom of God. We're here to honor the Lord. We're here to serve him. We're here to lift him up. We're here to say righteousness exalts a nation here in the United States of America. 
Yes, Jamaica, I'm a land of my birth, Barbados, and around the world, Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth, making disciples of all nations, that's the focus. So I invite you to come along with me and I along with you. Together, let us say like Ruth said to Naomi, entreat me not to leave you or return from falling off you. Where you go, I'll go. Where you lodge, I'll lodge. Your people will be my people. Your God, my God. When you die, they'll be buried and may only death will separate us. May we become like David and Jonathan. They were not willing to break ranks. But Jonathan and David made a pact and a bond and a covenant that even after Jonathan's death, David said, is there anybody in Saul's house that I can bless for Jonathan's sake? There comes a time in life where you have to buckle down long enough that you look at the long-term results and you're willing to go through the pain, the muck, the grime, and be like what Jesus said in Hebrews 12, be so compassed and so great a cloud of witnesses that have gone before us, we lay aside every sin and weight that so easily beset us and run the race of patience, looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despite the shame. And now he's seated at the right of the Father. Consider him when Jesus was affliction of sinners, lest you become faint in your mind. Don't lose your mind. Come on. Keep it moving. Your head has your eyes, your nose, your mouth, and your ear. Keep it open and focused. Breathe. Keep it moving. Hallelujah. Keep it moving. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want to play the song Amazing God. Amazing God. Mercy Chinwell. You always come through for me. Amazing God. Amazing God. Amazing God. Oh. Amazing God. God bless you. Amazing God. My Lord, my defender. Amazing God. You always come through for me. Amazing God, oh, oh. Amazing God. Amazing God, oh, oh. Amazing God. Amazing God. Amazing God, oh, oh. You always come through for me. Amazing God. Amazing God. Amazing God. Amazing God. My flowing testimony. My flowing testimony. Draw it, drop it. Yeah. You will be, Lord. Amazing God. Come on. Amazing God. Amazing God. I'm feeling good right now, y'all. Amazing God. Oh, oh, oh. Amazing God. Amazing God. Oh, oh, oh. Amazing God. You always come through for me. Amazing God. Oh, oh, oh. It's good to be myself, y'all.
about Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm passionate about the will and the work of God. I'm passionate about all persons receiving eternal life through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and to learn the word is Jesus Christ the Lord. He is the word made flesh. All you have to do is accept, believe, and confess with your mouth. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of all my sins and unrighteousness, and Lord, take full control of my life as I surrender to you in your name, Lord. Amen. Romans 10, 9, and 10. So if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, Lord, just you're saved. With the heart you believe, and you are saved. Amen. So welcome into the plan of salvation. And now is the time. The Bible says those who are pricked to the heart, amen, they ask what should be done. According to Acts 2, it was told to repent. And over 3,000 were added to the church in that day. I pray that today, that you know that today is the day of salvation. If anyone hears his voice, open his heart, he will come in and sup with you. The Bible says in Romans 10, how can they hear unless a preacher is sent? Amen. So I'm sent uh, to you to be able to speak a word. So welcome to the fold. Let me know how I did today. What are the areas that you connected with and that you've shared the page, you've shared the ministry, and you're ready to partner with me and I with you as we go forth for the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you. Thank you all for watching. Amen. Glory to God. I want to play this song by Aaron Cole. Don't worry. It's going to be right on time. And I think I may do a Jamaican, you know, because I'm from Jamaica. Y'all know Jamaica, no problem. Now. Jamaica, no problem, y'all. I'm just saying. Amen. Glory to God. So I get a little excited. You know, it's just my culture. It's the way we do things. Every now and then, so I don't get really so relaxed in the... um in the Cleveland, Tennessee diaspora. <laughs> the, I, love to, I love to get out every now and then and enjoy my, um, my culture of dance and fun and just really get out of the norm, norm of you know, things. I like to enjoy myself. When I'm home, yesterday I was home cleaning and I've got my music on and I mean, I was doing my dance, you know, because you get things done when you worship, you know. I'm like David, dancing with all my might before the Lord. You know what I'm saying? So that's how that really went on. So praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. So yeah, 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 you know. Um, that's how that worked. 
And I really enjoyed myself, y'all. I enjoyed my beautiful self. So pray for me. I want you to pray for me. I mean, put me in your prayer. And yeah, I need your prayers. I do. There's some things I have to get done. Next week, I have to go to court. I got to go to court to get some things um, done regarding my property here. Um, and there's some things I have to get situated here on campus to secure even more to, you know, to make sure the enemy don't think that he can come and, and, and try to do anything to take over. So I have to get a lot of things done. Um, it's going to take lots of money and time for other things that I have to get done and preparing to travel. School is about to be dismissed in May. So I have a very short time to get a few things done so I can travel with my family for the summer and come back while we're setting up the hub for others to rent it, uh, to use to birth their ministry, a lot of stuff's going on. I need help and pray and ask the Lord, if you are one of the laborers that should come to be here on time and to work with me. And I'm with you, okay. All right, don't worry, don't worry, it's on time. That's the song. The place now is not to fight all right. It will be all right. All right. It will be your daily life. Don't wait up, wait up. Cause love is always right on the side. I'm trying to figure out my own way. I'm trying to put it all on me. Way down by the pressure. Without looking up, I know you see me, cause All and on and on, you keep guessing me All and on and on, I keep you where we are I'm always funny when you're telling me Telling me, don't worry Just lay down, it's not your fight It will be alright Don't worry, it will be your very life Don't wait up, wait up I'm going to my song. Rise up. Come on. Come on. What's happening? Oh my gosh. It's tough a little bit. You know, just keep dancing. Oh, got him. Got him. Got him. <laughs> How about he come back on? I think I was just too deep in my juice. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. But don't worry. It's going to all work out. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Would y'all feel bad if I play um, One Love for Brad Bob Marley? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Yeah, that part. Amen. You know, I, I, um, Bob Marley sang the song, you know, it, Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our mind. Redemption song. You have to believe in the Lord. Throw my hands up and my load get lighter. Throw my hands up. Throw my hands up. Throw my Listen, I bless you all the nations of the world. Y'all know I'm the mother of apostles of the nations. Just the mother. By the time Mary showed up and greeted Elizabeth, Elizabeth was like, wow, how is it that the mother of my Lord came to visit me? Hey, I'm coming to a place near you right now. <laughs> ew, ew. Praise the Lord. Okay, praise the Lord. Okay. So y'all know I get on my deep ends. Y'all just, I get on my soapbox and when I got up there, it's just like, okay, listen, I've been teaching for five hours, 43 minutes. So you know, if I'm teaching for that long, I at least had to get some of my juice out. Just just a little bit of my, you know, little exercise, little rhythm. I know. Because <laughs> yesterday, yesterday's anointing cannot do, no, I'm telling you right now. Oh my gosh. All right. Okay. So I think my music just stalled down for a moment. The internet is not coming up as high, but we'll see what happens, you know. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see what's really happening around here. But hey, take care of yourself. I appreciate you. I honor God for you. And um, it's well. Amen. It is well with my soul. With my soul, it is well. It is well. It is well with my soul. All right. It's well. It's well. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Um, you know, there's a song by Christopher um, Gale. Um, Christopher Gale, he's a Jamaican artist. And he said, Jesus, fight my battle. Lord, me not let you go. Even when me hands them weak, Lord, me not let you go. Hey, hey, hey. Lord, me not let you go. <laughs> I'm trying to find it, y'all. I don't know what's happening. But I don't know what's happening right now. I don't know what's happening. I don't know. But anyways, I love you all. Please make sure you go back, watch the video, play it as you go to sleep tonight, you know, and play tomorrow again. It's almost six hours of teaching. So you got to divide it up in three, seven, eight, nine, ten meals. Okay. Just, just, yeah, let's wrap it up. And um, hopefully I get to see you guys willing this Sunday again, Sunday, this Sunday, this Sunday, that part, mm -hmm. and Monday, that part. Okay. Then, you know. No, you know. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna talk soon. Send me a text, send me an email, reach out to me. There it is. There's information. There it is. Reach out to me. Let me know how how I did. There's information. Call me. You know, I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you, all of you. I want to hear from all of you. Please let me hear from you. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Okay. I don't know why this thing is taking so long to upload, but I am going to say goodbye for now, my friends. Goodbye. I appreciate you. You are loved. You are appreciated. Grace to you in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.